Yo, what up, guys? What up, what up, man? So it's Friday night. So I always, those of y'all who are new, I always stream on Twitch Friday nights. So that's not nothing new. But I'm streaming on my YouTube channel, my program YouTube channel. Normally, I have not streamed on my dad channel Friday nights. I do that Thursday nights, which I did yesterday. Reason why I'm doing it today, uh, we may do some gaming later on today. But for now, I actually want to do some coding, man. So, again, you have questions, guys. I'd be more than happy to answer some questions. But we're not going to solve any problems. Like We could talk tech, talk code. But we're not going to solve any problems in this live stream. What I am going to do, I'm going to be working on this project. It's kind of just a, a project that I thought it would be interesting to work on. So we're going to work on that. And uh, kind of just go go through it, man, from beginning to end, pretty much, right, on this project. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing here for sure. But before we get started, um, let me do something real quick. And we'll get started, guys. Send this out. Awesome. All right, cool. Just want to send a send a tweet out real quick. Uh, but yeah, guys. So the thing that I wanted to work on on this stream is I have a project. So the the how this project came to be, there was this um, this app that I actually installed on my MacBook Pro. I think it's called Dash for AWS. So ultimately, kind of give you like a dashboard, very basic table grid uh, dashboard result of all of your AWS uh, EC2 instances, right? So kind of list it by region, and then it'll tell you if it's active, inactive provides IP address, all that kind of stuff. So I, I also guys, so I just, I got a uh, Mac, uh, a Mac studio. So I wanted, I was trying to find that app to install, couldn't find it. I tried to research it by the name, I couldn't find nothing. Eventually I found something. And then they just, it doesn't exist in the app store. It's almost like it got removed. So I'm not sure what happened to that. I don't know if the developer just kind of abandoned it and shut it down or what again i don't know all the details but it seemed like it's gone but i like that app man it was a nice cool app it was free that's the other thing that i liked about it either way because it's gone what i started looking into some documentation a little bit and i think i'm going to uh, build it myself now right i'm going to build something very similar so that's where in this live stream i'm going to be coding up the new project kind of again it's i'm literally starting from scratch so you, you'll you kind of see me do everything from scratch and then uh play around with it test it i think for now i do want to test out some of the core functionality first and then from there build it into some sort of uh, ui um, i don't know if i'm going to do a desktop ui yet or if i'm going to do potentially um uh, kind of you know like a, a web use a web interface that runs locally right uh, either or, I mean, technically both, either one would work, but I think for now we'll be just trying to code up, get the core concept of getting results back, getting the data that I need to display, and then I'll figure out what kind of UI I'm going to put it in. Hey, what up, Draw29? What's up, man? Thanks for joining the stream. 
So I'm going to be coding up a new project, man, in Python. So again, it's a brand new project. It shouldn't be a big project, kind of it's a small project. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll finish it tonight. But if not, continue on again on the next stream. But yeah, man, going to be coding up a new project in, uh, in Python. And ultimately what I'm doing is I'm going to be, I'm not sure you're familiar with AWS EC2 instance, but anytime you create a new um, VM, you know, it'll it, when you log into the AWS console, it kind of tells you the all the information related to that instance, right? Like the IP address, the name, um, you know, all, some all kinds of other attributes associated with it. So I'm going to be building pretty much an app where it it will pull that information down to the app and of course display it. So instead of me having to log in to AWS console, which sometimes becomes a pain in the ass because like kind of giving an example on my business account that I have for AWS, when I log in, I have multi-factor authentication. So I have to log in, then I have to go get my six digit code. And even then to get it off my phone, I have to log into that. And sometimes I just need to check real quick, right? Just to get to it real quick. So either way, I'm building, I'm going to be building an app for that uh, in the live stream, man. So I'm going to actually code it. So before we do that, Again, it is Friday. Um, let's see. It is Friday. So because it's Friday, guys, it is tequila night. I got me some tequila. So I'm going to be sipping on some tequila. Let me go ahead and switch screens. Cool. So again, maybe we'll do some gaming later on. But I think for now, we're going to just we're gonna do some coding. So let me create a new project for this. And I'm going to put this under YouTube. Um, hmm. Yeah, I can put it under YouTube. That, that should be fine. Let me create a new folder. Uh, we're going to call this AWS EC2 uh, dashboard. Right, I just call it that for now. AWS EC2 dashboard. All right, cool. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and open this up and VS code. So this is where we're going to be coding. This is our pretty much our text editor. Anybody who's new. Um, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and come in here. All right, cool. I shouldn't need nothing else. Let me get a terminal spin up. So for me, I have, uh, cause I'm using windows. So I use all three operating system guys. I use uh, windows. I use Mac OS, uh, talking about Mac OS. I actually just got a, a Mac studio a couple of days ago. So I got that set up. I have a video explaining why I end up switching from Linux to Max to Max Mac. But, uh, yeah, man, I'm using, uh, and then of course I still use Linux. For other stuff as well but I like git bash I don't like the command prompt so I'm gonna go ahead and get git bash and well, pretty much one of the things I need to do here is we need to start a new environment um, so in order to do that virtual environment I'm going to uh, let's do Python I am in the right place M V E V E N V, then I'm going to call it E N V. Right. So that you can see it created a folder. Ultimately, this is going to have all of my packages that I'm going to be working with. Um, damn, never thought I'll see you switch from Linux, Linux to Mac. So again, man, I, I like Linux, man. My biggest issue that I had and it, it's kind of been a pain in the ass is that's, you know, I will say for sure last two months is um some of the there are a lot of apps not I'm gonna say a lot there's a few key apps that I literally use every day that I like a lot that just do not either exist or do not does not work well or does not work at all on Linux. Um there's some basic stuff for example like of course Outlook doesn't exist for Linux. So I had a what I had to do I had to use the um the web um app the web version of outlook 
And I made it work to some degree, but there was all kinds of funkiness that I honestly, the last couple of months, I wasn't really having earlier, but I was having all kinds of weird issues happening. So I don't know if it was because they did updates or what, but it was just acting very funky lately. And, but again, even then, that's not enough for me to switch. That was just one of those little nuances. I think what really made it more was just uh, there are some other key apps that I have and also my VM. Man, I, I think this happened like in December maybe or early January. My uh, VM just kind of, there was an update to the Linux kernel. And I don't know what happened, man. Missed up my VM. So now I had to go uninstall it, go find a, a different version of the VM, get that installed. So again, you have little nuances like that that occurs with, with Linux every once in a while. And it's not too big of an issue if it was like non-work computer. But for me, it became an issue because, of course, that issue happens right when I when I need it. So now i got to literally waste an hour or two trying to figure out what's happening, doing research, then from there, uninstalling, reinstalling a, diff a newer, older version, and eventually getting it to work. I mean, there's a lot of little stuff like that, man, that, you know, um, came up. So that's kind of where, and again, I'm, I'm, I have a MacBook Pro, so I've been, you know, I am familiar with uh, Mac, and a lot of the little issues that I have, I, I actually did not have, I don't, I don't have those issues with Mac. So from a work perspective, that's kind of where I think for me was like, man, it makes sense to use a Mac for work because A, all of the key apps that I want, that I use, actually exist for Mac. And I just exist, dude. It actually, it actually works because the code base is built natively for Mac. So they're using Swift, the Swift programming language to build these apps. Dude, there are, they're fast. What, one, of, one of the apps that I use that's very... Um, I use it a lot, like every day. It's called uh, Table Plus. It's a database management tool, but I like it because it's not very, it's very simple, very minimal, but it's fast, like super fast. Well, on Windows, it's it's kind of buggy, uh, kind of slow, better yet. Um, on Windows, on Mac, it is like super fast, dude, and I love it because like everything just instant from auto completion to even when I get results back and I scroll left to right, it's like instant. There's no delays. Everything just works. It's been optimized for, uh, for Mac. Uh, but again, the little, little stuff like that. And then ultimately, I was gonna build a computer, a gaming PC this April because I think I mentioned it in one of my live streams that that's the plan. April, I'm gonna build a new. Um, gaming rig. Well, I started thinking about like, dude, I could use my pretty much my workstation that I'm using now and really just convert that to a gaming station. The the CPU is a lot uh, newer than what I have now, so it is an upgrade. Um, it has all the components. Um, I have 32 gigs of RAM. I mean, I literally have everything. All I have to do is swap GPUs. Uh, but I but I have a GPU already. I just have to install it. And I'm good to go. So I don't even need to, you know, spend money on building a new gaming computer. If I do that, I could just use the money I'm going to spend on that and ultimately, you know, buy the Mac Studio, which I did. I got the Mac Studio and I got it set up. So that's kind of what you see in the background. It's set up where it's running Mac Studio now. Uh, I mean, Mac on the Mac Studio. But the one of the main reasons, too, is because my video editing, um, I, I started testing out video editing and it's actually very a sm lot smoother than my stream my streaming station, which it's pretty powerful. I mean, I have a, a, a i12 900K for the CPU, a 3070 Ti, um, DDR5, 32 gigs of RAM, and so forth. But man, it would just when it came to video editing, it, it was still a bit choppy. Where on the Mac Studio, it's actually pretty smooth. For video editing, but I would say for rendering, not not video editing, but for rendering, the the my streaming station is actually a bit faster than the Mac Studio. So, um, the, I think my flow is going to be I'm going to edit over here, which makes sense because I have more screens as well, and I just have more space. My desk is bigger over here, so I'm going to have my my um. I'm able to have this um, DaVinci Resolve speed editor. So I use this when I do my editing, kind of helps out. 
to edit the videos faster. So edit them over here in the Mac Studio. And then on my streaming computer, I could technically render them over here too. Like it's pretty fast, but I know for now my streaming station is a bit faster. So have it render over here because it is faster. So that's probably going to be the plan for now. Also, when it, because I, I all of my videos, when it be, whenever I do my editing, all my videos are being edited from the NAS. So like after I record, I upload my video to my NAS. Then I create a new project in DaVinci Resolve, and I and I am pulling data from the NAS. So I, I don't download the whole uh, video to locally on, on the Mac Studio or or to edit. It's actually pulling it from the NAS uh, real time. And that's where the Mac Studio came in handy because it comes out of the box. It comes by default with a 10 gigabit uh, Ethernet port. So, and then of course, I just ordered for my NAS. Um, I ordered it with a yesterday, a 10 gigabit uh, NIC card. So that's coming in Sunday. Only thing I need to buy though is I need to buy a 10 gigabit switch. So I found one, but man, dude, they're pretty expensive, man. I didn't realize they were that expensive. I found one, a four port. Four port, man. Four port only. 10 gigabit switch. Like 350 bucks. So, yeah, they're not cheap. Um, time to play Halo on a Mac Studio. No, no. I won't be gaming on a Mac Studio. Keep in mind, that's strictly for work, man. I bought it for the purpose of work. Uh, and, of course, video editing, which, I mean, I guess, I don't know. But you call that work or not. But, uh... Strictly programming, video editing. I do have a VM on here as well. With the VM, I gotta say, dude, I use a VM before. That VM is awesome. It's called Parallel Desktop for Mac. It is, for me, it's like one of the best VMs, man. Like, I wish they had it on Windows or even Linux or other operating system because that VM is awesome, dude. Like, I really, really like that VM a lot. That's what I use on my um, MacBook Pro when I travel, when I need to use Windows. Cause there are like two, only two apps, man, that I that I use that are window related, which is SQL Server Management Studio and uh, Power BI. That's it, man. If it wasn't for those two apps, I would not even need a VM. Well, I mean, I was maybe I would for projects that I need to spin up a Linux server or whatever to do testing. But normally, I don't need that because I do have a computer that I could another computer here I could uh, spin up. And then, or, or just spin something up in the cloud. So um, that's not too big of an issue. Not, not how it used to be. Back in the day, that's the way you did it. You used to have a local VM, so you could spin up different instances. Um, you still, there's still a use case for that, but just not as much as how it used to be. That's for sure. Um, definitely upgrades your uh, your flow. Yeah, man. I think my workflow is gonna be a lot. Um, lot better man for sure it was just a lot of little nuances dude like that 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 uh, i had to I had to do some workarounds but i dealt with the workarounds but then it became some of the workarounds that i did just didn't feel as efficient because then i was having little just little issues occurring um like you know kernel update that broke the vm but that caused a big issue man it was a big issue for me um but then of course the the web outlook just acting funky lately. So just kind of little issues with that. Uh, of course, Excel, in order for me to use Excel, I had to use it in the VM where Mac has an Excel, like literally Office, Microsoft Office for X, for, for Mac. And it's actually not bad. It's actually, I used it before, again, on MacBook Pro and I actually like it. Uh, it doesn't have all the features of Excel, but it has the majority of the features of Excel. So I think it works works well. Uh, pretty much, man, all the apps that I use on Mac, uh, I would say, though, a lot of the apps that I am using that were natively on Linux, like, uh, Postman, VS Code, um, PyCharm, I don't know, I'm just trying to think of a few, the Beaver, things of that nature, all of that, Linux had a version of, man, and it actually worked very fine on Linux, so that, that wasn't the case, I just wish they had some of these I just, the the VM, it, it come on, will cause issues for me. And then, um, and then, of course, just some of the other key applications that I use that just, again, were missing. And 
but even with um what was the what was the other issue that i have um like onedrive onedrive the big one too like i all of all of our my work files it's saved on onedrive so one thing with mac is just like windows you could install or you know like have your onedrive sync to your computer so now you have like a folder on your computer click on it you see all your files just like the way you do in windows well mac has that functionality like again, that for me is something big because it 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 I'm more it optimized my workflow now when I'm working. Where before I literally had to go to the browser, go to Outlook in the browser. If I find my file, now I had to download the file. Once I download it, up uh, you know, open it up, make changes, save it, then upload it back to OneDrive. It was just like a lot of again download, upload, download, upload, and things of that nature. Where now I had to do that, just open it directly from the OneDrive that sync to the Mac. And of course, as I make changes, it gets uploaded auto automatically, right? Little stuff like that. Hey, what up, Cap? Got Cap in the house. What's up, man? So today, again, guys, this is going to be a coding. I uh, saw so what I'm coding, what I'm going to be coding is I'm going to be working on building a dashboard for AWS EC2. So just kind of show y'all real quick. So those of you who are not familiar, I'm not sure. Um, so I'm gonna log in to my my this is my my sandbox AWS that I use for my YouTube channel and stuff like that. So I'm gonna log in to to this account. So I, I am remote. I, I am working on a remote machine right now. Like I'm, I'm on my streaming computer, but I'm actually remoted in. Like what you see here, this is a separate computer. So if it looks a bit choppy, um, then you kind of know why. There may be a small delay just because I am streaming as well, and I'm rem I'm being remote in to um, to one of my other computers. All right, so let's go to EC2 instance. So normally what happens is in AWS, um, again, those of you who are not may not be familiar, in AWS, so AWS is pretty much cloud services, right, that Amazon provides, which is, again, AWS, like the most popular cloud service provider right now. So EC2, did this just think of it where you could kind of create, spin up new um new instances of windows linux etc right you know the list goes on if i were to click on la launch instance you know we'll get a lot of different options you know even mac os right i could spin up a mac os option the list goes on and on um so in my case i don't think i have nothing right now set up but we'll we'll we will create one i guess i probably should create one now I'm gonna do a let's do Amazon Linux. That's fine. Something basic, entry level. Yeah, free tier. Um, yep, that's fine. Uh, let's do ARM. Probably be a little bit cheaper to do ARM architecture. We just need the basic minimal, which is probably gonna be this guy. One vCPU, two gigs. Kind of tell you the price: five cents per hour. Um, I really don't care too much about logging in. I'm going to kill it, I guess, but I want to create it more so to show you how it looks in the, the EC2 instance screen and kind of give you my use case on why I'm kind of working on building what I'm building. Um, Create new key pair again. I don't really need it. I'm gonna I'm gonna end up killing it anyways. Eight gigs is fine. All right, let's launch instance. Is that a micro? This is medium. What the hell? Do we have what? What are our options? Medium does seem pretty small though. All right. Yep. Two gigs. Okay, that should be fine. Let's go ahead and launch this. 
So it doesn't want to select the key pair. Let's generate a new one. Oh, you know what? Let's just use one. We already have one in here. Let's use this one. Process without. That's fine. And let's launch. All right, cool. So let's view all the instances. So let me kind of tell you why I'm doing this. Um, for me, so in, in my production AWS in environment, I have a few, a handful of these insta instances. Like I think I have maybe, I don't know, man, maybe eight or so or nine. Some of them are off and then some of them stay on consistent. But then I also got, got like one or two that I actually have programmatically where um, I have like a job that runs the job that says, so I don't know if you notice for this one, which is a very small instance, but I think the cost is like five cents per hour, right? They just kind of do, you know, just, just so you know, five cents an hour, which is five cents an hour times 24 hours. So that's a dollar to a day or well, times, let's say 30 days a month. That means it's going to cost about $36 um, dollars a month to run that instance. Now, if you're trying to save money, because let's say, like in my case, I'm trying to, I actually had, mine costs more than that. It's one of those services that I think it cost me maybe, um, I don't know, man. I want to say it's more like 90 cents an hour or something like that, which again, then you start to add up more when once you did it with 90 cents times 24 hours. That is $21 a day. So right a little bit more, but I, I, it runs because it needs to process. I have this like specific, it's a, it's a server that does one specific test. It literally generates XML files and converts them into these PDF templates. And it's doing that for like literally hundreds or even thousands of files. And so I have this job where it starts up, let's say for example, eight in the morning, but then it shuts off at, you know, 4 PM or whatever, right? It only runs for a few hours a day. And I do that because I want to try to reduce costs. If I just have it running nonstop, as you could tell it's that $21 a day, five times 30, that ends up being $648. So it's like, all right, well, if I'm able to keep it one third of the, of the time, um, right? Like 0.33, which is the one third then at least I could reduce the cost by literally a couple hundred bucks a month as an example. Right? So either way, sometimes I have the process to automate that and schedule. So that's not an issue, but because I, this, the server does not have a, a static IP address. It's a dynamic IP address. Every once in a while I need to log into that server. But what happens because it's dynamic, the IP address changes every time that instance restarts again. Right, like I start in the morning, then I shut it off. But well, when it starts again the next day, it's and now it has a different IP address. So every day, new IP address, new IP address. Well, every once in a while, I do need to log in, I need to log into the server, check some stuff out, and things of that nature. So um, when when um, when I need to log in, now I got a whole. There's a whole process behind that. The process is. I need to log into AWS. I have multi-factor authentication, so it's not it's not even user password. It's user password and my six-digit code. Well, in order to get my six-digit code, I need to log on to the app, my authenticator app on my phone. Once I log into that, then I could get the code, put it in. Then ultimately, once I do log in, then I have to go to again EC2 instance. You know, then ultimately go to running instances and, you know, go to the whole process, find it. Then I'll be able to see my IP address down below. So again, it's, it's not that it's hard, but it's one of the processes where I just want to, the only purpose is I just want to be able to get my IP address. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build an app that literally I could just have running or start up when I want. And it's going to be my dashboard. So it's going to be connected to to is going to pull all of this information that you see here, right? Which is again, IP address, the name of the instance. In this case, I didn't give it a name. So I do want to give it a name to just call it, um, um, Linux 
uh, sandbox, right? Whatever the name is, but you know, production. I have better names for, but you know, either way, you could pull all the information down, and and so really, I have to start my app, and it would just show me right away, without having to go through the whole login process and do everything. Um, is this for a different project or part of the Go Share? So the app that I'm going to build, it's kind of, it's more what I. It has nothing to do with Go Share. It, it would be like I would use it. Uh, realistically, I would use it for um, for my business on whenever I need to see stuff in a in EC2 instances. So it'd be more for that. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't be like it has. It really wouldn't be nothing related to my Go Share it app. Um, and also, guys, just you know, those of you who know where I have an app called Go Share It. So the website Go Share it on IO. It is live, so by all means, you're more than welcome to register, play around with it, allow you to share files, you know, when the recipient does not need an email to receive the files. And you could passcode protect the files and password protect the files as well. So they will need that password or that passcode in order to be able to download these files. So you can check, take a look at it. Uh, we, there have been some updates that have been done. Uh, for example, one of the updates was done with the, the login page. It looks different than what it was. So either way, we are, there's updates being done to this um, every other week, I believe. Um, we're we're pushing changes, but yeah, but yeah, no, it has nothing to do with that app. Um, it has to do more uh, with more like I would use it more for my business, like because we we you know I need to sometimes log into specific servers or th like in this case the server happens to be like the one that I'm talking about. That I need to remote into it is a, a Windows server, so I do RDPN. Normally, if it's a Linux server, I would. Um, there is a way to, like, if I click on connect, I would SSH into that, and the way you SSH into it would be based off of this um, URL, pretty much this domain, right? So, this is the how you would access it oh my bad this right here and uh that would connect me to it so and this is actually probably something good to 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 have set up like i was thinking of make this app probably not calling up me and calling it generic like right now it's, it's pretty generic which is um ec aws ec2 dashboards because i think i could probably add some other functionalities now that i think about it like this app, I could add some functionalities to be able to access uh, S3 buckets to be able to see the different buckets, different files, things of that nature, right? At least for now to view it and then maybe work on capabilities of moving files around. Um, glue, you know, executing glue jobs or things of that nature, right? Or at least viewing the list of glue jobs. So maybe let me change the name for now, man. Let me call this something like... Uh, let's see what what should I call this AWS um, services uh, service dashboard is probably a better name. Oops, I know why because of this. So let me close out of this real quick. Try again. Cool. So now let me go ahead and open this back up. All right, cool. So now that I have this open again, there's a few things we're going to test out first, right? So we're going to play around with first. We're going to test that out. Let me change my font on this, man. My font's actually kind of small. So here's my font. Let's change this to maybe like 20. Um, so what I'm going to do now, let's go ahead and back to the terminal. I'm going to go ahead and I like git bash. So I'm going to use git bash because I am on windows. So I had to install this. I, I like the Linux feel better than the wind the command prompt. So that's kind of why I installed git bash to use the, the bash, um, terminal. Uh, so now let me go ahead and activate. I'm going to activate the environment. So again, um, virtual environments, those who are new, is 
whenever you install Python, Python come with a set, a, a specific set of packages, right? Like your very basic, you know, mathematical packages, um, just a lot of basic stuff to be able to connect to a URL, you know, um, to encrypt, to decrypt. There's, there's a lot of stuff that it comes with just kind of out of the box that's kind of basic. Um, but anytime you, you may be installing additional third-party packages, like in my case, I'll be installing the uh, Boto3 package, which is the AWS API for Python. I don't want to install that in my main environment. So anytime you install Python, think of it, you have your 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 main environment like the original environment when you create a virtual environment what you kind of do is you have your main environment here you kind of create a linkage from this virtual environment that connects to this main environment so any packages that you install here ultimately those packages you could use and then your core functionality from your main environment is over here but it connects to your virtual environment so now you get your main packages and then your virtual environment would have all of your new stuff as well, you know, for the most half. So there's, you know, it's kind of that concept. So like that, you're not, um, you're not like, I like to keep the main environment pure as possible. You don't want to install nothing on there, but you install all the other stuff. Cause maybe you install crap without realizing it, but you want to install that in your virtual environment. So it doesn't affect your main environment. So that's, so that's what I did here. Created my, Virtual environment, call it E, it's under the ENV folder. So now let's go ahead and activate it. So it's source, then of course activate. Now you could tell, cause it tells you the name over here. That's how you know that it's activated. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna install the first package. So it's pip install boto3. So while that installs, Successfully, warning, blah, blah, blah. All right, so that, sh everything seems, I'm trying to think, why do we get out of warnings for package, package, invalid distribution, so what happened here? Let's look under lib. Um, lib. Oh, site packages. Hold on, let me see what version of Python am I using? I just thought about it. So I'm using 3.8, which is fine. That's not an issue. Let me see if I can upgrade my pip real quick. Python. Upgrade pip. Uh, cannot install due to permissions. Okay, which is fine. Rolling back, uninstalled a pip. Found existing installation. So why is it not? I'm trying to think, man. I'm wondering if, let me see real quick. Let me do Python. Import Boto three. Uh, you know what? I'm wondering if I'm, I'm wondering if I installed a Boto three in my Python instance. I probably did, and I think that's why. Hmm. And I probably did that by accident. I'm pretty sure. Let me make sure I don't have another version of Python. Uh, three nine. So let me do this, man. I actually, I'm trying to think if this will cause issues, but I don't think it is. 
I'm gonna download Python um, I'm gonna download Python 10 not 11 because 11 it's still too new but I'm gonna install Python so I'm gonna have to kill the terminal real well I don't have to kill the terminal what I'm talking about so let me go ahead and install Python 3.10. Um, pass, customize. Yep, that's fine. Install for all. Yep, Python 3.10. Let's go ahead and get this installed. So while that's installing, guys, it's Friday, so I got me some tequila. So it's tequila time. See how good or not so good this tequila is. Oh, it has a good smell. I would say that the smell is good. It has a good smell. It's not too bold of a smell, even though I like I like the smell even when it's like hits you in the face. But it's actually good though, man. It's not like too too much, but it's it's good. So this is what I'm gonna do, man. I'm gonna kill this. I don't want this this environment. So before I kill it, let me deactivate it. And I'm gonna delete this folder. So I'm gonna delete Okay, what I want to do now, I'm going to have to kill this terminal too. Let me start a new bash terminal. And if I run Python, uh, nope. So let me do Python 3, permission denied. Uh, Python 3.10. three so let me see where did it let me see where the um where did it get installed so that python 3.8 11 where's python 10 at There it goes, Python 10. There it goes, Python 10 in here. So I, I want this environment. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna have to specify this. So let's go ahead and specify this. Python.exe, um, virtual environment, env. There it goes, that created a new environment. The smells good, man. The smell is good, I gotta say. Like, I again, I do like the smell where it's like in your face, but it kind of worries me sometimes because the thing with tequila is like when you can find a good tequila that's made the right way and it, it has a strong smell, that you do find some like that but they're not you don't find too many natural ones that are that strong of a smell normally when it's like very very strong of the smell it's kind of like um it's been tampered with put it that way it's been tampered with in a way that that um they added like right they added additives and things of that nature to make it smell very strong which is not good if that's really is the case. But hopefully that's not the case. So I'm going to give it a taste. So let's go ahead and try to activate this real quick. Um, so this would be, oops. There we go, uh, source. Boom, activated. So now I could do P 
pip install Boto 3. And there it goes, installing Boto 3. And this would be on Python 3.10. Nice. Um, it slaps you the nostrils. It does, dude, it does. But it's good, man. I like that kind of slap. <laughs> Let's give it a taste. Dude, this is smooth. I gotta say, man, it actually it's it's very, very smooth. There it goes. I feel a little small warmness going down now, but it goes down smooth, guys. Like I don't know. I gotta say it goes down a little bit too smooth. I mean I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it goes down very smooth. It's not bad. The taste is actually good too. It does have a good taste. Okay, so now we got that installed, Boto 3. Let's look at the documentation on what we're going to be doing here so i'm going to be dealing with uh boto 3 and ec2 so let's look at the documentations for this by the way lou are you holding the uh the monthly giveaways i'm not man honestly i need to schedule that in I just been so so busy the last really the these last couple of weeks um with my YouTube channel um you know just been busy on getting things a lot of focus on that so I think for that that's kind of I kind of I kind of slack put it that way on my side when it comes to Twitch so I'm trying to find a good balance cuz it feels like you know when I go you know, put a lot of effort on YouTube, then Twitch kind of goes down on effort. But if I put a lot of effort on Twitch, then YouTube goes down. So I'm trying to find the nice balance. But right now, I haven't put a lot of effort into YouTube. Just a lot of things I've been working on YouTube. So, you know, Twitch kind of been slacking a little bit. But I do, I need to bring it back. And I do need to kind of get back um, on focus. Uh, get focus more back on it. You know... What I want to do with Twitch, and because I do feel that this is going to be beneficial, right? Where at least, at least two times, because I think realistically I should be able to do two times a week. You no know, Friday is a course like today, and then try to pick another day that makes sense to squeeze in and put in some hours on Twitch as well. Um, YouTube, like YouTube, is the one that one of the reasons why I've been putting effort because I've been it's it been growing, man. I've been getting some. Some traction on YouTube, um, like I think my growth on there, man. It's I mean it's there's days that I'm getting again. It's nothing crazy, but it's way more than Twitch for sure. You know, like eight new followers a day, for example. Well, oh, that adds up. You, you know, a couple of days of that, and you know that's like fifty new followers. Uh, I think so. I got my report last time for YouTube. I think I had. Um, what was it? It was, I think it was like 13,000 views for the month of January and 64,000 watch hours or something like that. Again, it's pennies compared to big streamers, but dude, that's actually, I mean, just from, at least from uh, being small, it's not bad. So that's kind of where I see it trending. Man, why is this keep, what the hell is going on here, man? Um, it keeps trending. It's trending up. So I, I, that's kind of why I want to um, keep putting effort into it. And I'm doing my courses too. So I started putting out some videos. So I think so far I have like three videos. And I got a few, man. I'm going to try to make four to five this weekend for my Python beginner course. Because so, my plan is I want to I wanna be able to finish all of the Python beginner course this month, the month of February. So if I could finish those those Python beginner courses for the month of February, then on for the month of March, I'm going to start the new set of courses for Python, which is going to be more advanced and kind of go over more advanced stuff in Python. And then the goal would be for the month of hopefully um, April or May, I'm going to be focusing on a Python course related to uh, Python, uh, APIs. Or uh, web development. I gotta see which I'm gonna do first. 
but I, I have a, I have a set of so overall the course of that I have in mind that I'm that I'm the plan is to have done like from now to the end of the year. But I'm gonna be knocking one course at a time. It's Python beginner course, Python Python advanced, Python API. So that's three courses. Python web that would be using the Jang, um, Django and Flask framework for Python. Uh, Python Microsoft services. So that means, you know, Python integrating with Microsoft stuff, right? Whether it be OneDrive, like, you know, getting files from OneDrive, uploading files to OneDrive, deleting files from OneDrive, uh, SharePoint, um, Excel, like interacting with Excel, different packages to interact, like create new Excel files, update Excel files, things of that nature, uh, like password protect Excel files, like a lot of the stuff. I have not, I have made some videos related to some of that stuff already, but I'm going to package all of that into a course, you know, so hopefully it'll be a little bit more structure. Uh, but it's going to be ev everything related to Microsoft, Python and Microsoft services, how, how I mentioned, right? From, um, well, let me rephrase it. Python and Microsoft Office services. So I don't want to say Microsoft services because they have Azure and all kinds of other stuff. So that will be a, potentially another video for later, but it will be Microsoft Office services. So that will be your OneDrive, SharePoint, um, Excel, Word even, like, you know, uh, modifying Word documents or creating Word documents and things of that nature. Um, what else? Did I say Excel? Yeah, Excel. Um, and SharePoint, OneDrive, those are like the main stuff anyways, but yeah, uh, those Python courses video that you are dropping are, are high quality production. I appreciate it, man. So I'm trying to, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you've probably seen at least one or two, but I am trying to do it slightly, uh, different. Like, again, I've been putting some effort into it, man. I Like, I got a green screen. I don't know. You can't eat. So, I have it folded. But see this black thing right there behind me. So, that's a green screen that opens up. And then when I'm done, I just fold it back up. So, I've been using the green screen to... It's kind of why in the video, you don't... You, there is no background. It's just me. So, I've been... I kind of invested into that for the video. Then, of course, I've been doing some, some slides, you know, on some of the some of the things some of the stuff i'm going to go over i'm not going to need slides because i'm going to be like showing the viewers you know through the video how to do x y and z but there's some stuff that you know it's easier to show the video and uh not not a video show the uh, create a, a um a slide and kind of show it that way so but yeah man again it's man i i, I the way i'm looking at it my years it's already it's already busy man it's i already have Pretty much the whole year schedule now things change things happen so got, uh, you know gotta always be flexible but i really though man i'm telling you that my goal is for the end of this year i want to be at 10k um subscribers on youtube so i'm at 22 something right now i don't know what it is i think i'm close to like 2300 or uh yeah i think i am close to 2300 so I'm about a quarter way there, but I've still got some more to go, right? And that's, uh, I think it's doable, but man, I know I'm, I'm going to have to put in some effort to get there for sure. But that's my goal, man. 10K followers on YouTube by the end of the year. If I'm able to hit that goal, I am going to do a, a very nice giveaway, put it that way, for my YouTube community. If I'm able to hit 10K by the end of the year. Um... Again, if we don't hit it, then we don't hit it. And, of course, no giveaway. But if we do hit it, I am going to have a giveaway for that. Um, it's going to be either a uh, MacBook Pro or it's going to be a laptop, of whether it be um, um, System76. If you're like a Linux guy, you want a Linux laptop or a Framework laptop, the one like from Linus Tech Tips if you want to a windows um so it'll be, it'll be one of those but again gotta you know we'll see man if we hit the goal of 10k on youtube then i will be doing a giveaway for it on that channel um then you gotta promote your channel man hey it, it's growing guy it, it's 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 great. Right. So put it this way right now, organically, it has been growing 
right? Like, not crazy, but, you know, I see the growth months over months. Like, I would say, like, let's say three months ago, I was probably getting, on average, like, I don't know, man. I'm going to say maybe two to three subscribers a, a day, on average. Which, again, I mean, it's something to get something every day, but it's still small. I think now, man, I'm probably getting more like eight or so a day average around there. So it's, you know, it's about almost three times more than what it was three months ago. But it's still small. But the, the goal is, right, I feel like, at least that's what it seems like, the more active I am, which means making more videos, things of that nature. Not just making videos, but communicating, right? Like, I do respond back to comments on the YouTube, things of that nature. Then hopefully that eight or so average will go to 16 an, a day subscribers. Then eventually it goes to 25 a day. And then, of course, 50 a day. And then, uh, you know, once you get to those numbers, that's how eventually, you know, one will be able to get to that 10K mark. Um, but, yeah, everything's been very organic, right? Like, I have not paid anybody to sponsor my channel or anything like that it's literally just be me interacting with the community me through my live streams interacting with with people and making videos as well right as i as i make videos people are getting content that they like and then they eventually subscribe so um it's all about consistent uh 10 billion no uh, not 10 billion 10,000, 10,000 subscribers, not 10 billion subscribers. Hell no, dude. Like, who's the highest on YouTube right now, man, with subscribers? I believe that's, um, is it, uh, what's the name? Um, PewDiePie, maybe? I don't know, man. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's up there. I think, doesn't he have, like, over 100 million subscribers? But, yeah, something like that. It's all about the consistency, more traffic uh yeah but still marketing it's still better no i totally agree man like i don't i don't think it's nothing wrong to market it's just a matter on on how to do it right um so and that's kind of where you know i probably need, need, need to spend at least some effort into that as well because i think that would help too for sure you know on that like i don't want to buy views put it that way right i know some people do that they buy viewers you know, they buy subscribers. There's like places that they do that. I even have people reach out to me. Hey, you need help to grow your channel? Like for, you know, $300, we do blah, blah, blah. But again, all it is is bots. And, you know, it's very temporary what I'm saying, right? Like you could buy viewerships and all that. And yeah, your number will look good for that moment because you see it go up. But once they stop promoting it, once they, they're like, you know, they're done with their job on, you know, again, um, making your, making your viewership high. Like once they go away, then you just see a drop and I don't want that either because then it's kind of like, you know, I know if it's done in a manner where people are really coming to my channel cause a, they like it and they like the content, they're going to come back, you know, over and over again. So um, need to find that what, what that right balance is. But the one thing I would say, man, that most people, like people that I that I follow on YouTube, that you know got some some good viewerships. The one thing they all say is, it's not necessarily marketing or nothing like that. What they say it's consistency. You got to keep pushing videos, right? It's one of the, it's kind of it's almost like this rule of thumb that YouTube does for most, not all, but most viewers, most most, uh, not viewers, uh, most content creators. It's almost like they're they're this hill that YouTube wants you to climb. And that hill is how many videos can you make and continue to make? Because most people quit, man. They make, so most people may make two, three, 10, 20 videos, and then they don't get no traction. They're like, you know what, I'm done. Cause they're expecting results right away. But it almost feel like for most people, what YouTube does is like, hey, we want you to make at least 100, 150 videos. And once you get like to this higher number of making videos, then I don't know where your channel just like explodes. And, and the reason why I said it explodes because I think it seems like Google then starts pushing your content. It's almost like they, they, they kind of realize or 
I don't know if it's part of their algorithm or what exactly, but like, hey, let's help them out. And there's people that I I, I remember following on YouTube. They have smaller uh, followers. They, when I say smaller, they still they had some followers, but they were like one of them had like ten thousand followers. And then literally, dude, like literally, in the matter of like, you know, a month or two, he went from ten thousand to like eighty thousand. And he talked about it. He made a video about that, how his channel just explode. And, you know, it was just one day. It just kind of happened one day, right? But he, the thing that he did, though, was consistent was he kept pushing out videos, pushing out videos, pushing out videos. Every week, pushing out videos. And it seems, and he's not the only one. There have been other content creators that have been the same thing where, you know, they have come out and said that they may push out videos, push out videos, nothing. But they kept doing it to eventually one day they just woke up and their numbers like literally went from, you know, maybe a thousand views a week, a day. Like it was literally like, you know, 15 to 20,000 views a day, like just like that, dude, overnight. And the only way in my mind that happens is most likely that Google's pushing, pushing your videos because they, if Google helps push your videos, there, there's going to be a lot of people that gonna um that it gets all a numbers game right it's you know even like with my videos assuming that google maybe pushes my video to just a thousand people but if it's a number game where let's say four percent out of everybody that sees my video uh subscribes to my channel well if they're only pushing it to a thousand people well i'm only gonna get a small percentage because that's all they're pushing it to but if google pushes it to a hundred thousand people and I'm still getting that 4%, you know, uh, traction. Well, it's not a small number no more. It's a big number because it's out of a hundred thousand people that they pushed or they pushed to a million people, right? It's even more. So that, at least that's a pattern that I have seen from people that, you know, grew their channel and they kind of shared how it literally seemed like it was just overnight, right? Kind of deal. But it's, it really isn't overnight. Like you got to, they were consistent to making videos for like over a year, you know, two years even, or even three years or whatever. But it just like one day, man, it's, it's what it seems like, right? As you just continue to make videos, like Google just, you know what? We're going to get, we're going to throw a bone at this guy. We're going to give him a little push for maybe a week or two, but that's all you need. Once you give it that little push, now you're out and you got 50, a hundred thousand followers. That's all it takes, man. Once you get that, as long as you keep pushing out videos, some of those 100,000 followers, not everybody, but even for like 5% that watches their video every time you post a new video, dude, that's like 5,000 views every time you post out a video, like right away, not counting the newer people that come and watch your videos. So, uh, you're doing the right path by being active and keeping in the YouTube. Yeah. Again, man, that's, that's what, what, um, that that's what's needed, man, for sure. Um, so let's see. Let's look at the documentation, guys. So Boto three. I don't know why. Was it this same page that was acting funky earlier? I think it was. So we're gonna use Boto three, but I want to use it for EC two. So let me find the EC two. Let me see where is it at. There it goes. EC two. So let's go to the EC two page. So I'm gonna client and so see how it tells us here where we, we would import in the Boto 3 package because that's kind of what we installed Boto 3 and then this would be my client and the way this works will be Boto 3 dot client client means I got to specify the service right in my case is EC2 if it's S3 it will be S3 and so on and so on. So let's copy this for now. So this is very choppy and you know what? I think it has to do because so I'm going to call this test because I'm going to just be playing around with some stuff here before I start building, putting something together. I'm going to be playing around. Why? What happened here? Why did this get activated? Uh, that makes no sense. So let me activate, dude, I swear I activated this. 
There it goes. I did. Yeah, that was odd. Not sure what happened there. Oh, I know why. It's pointing to the wrong environment. So, let me select the environment. Oops, wrong section. Scripts. There it goes. Cool. Now I found it. All right. So again, when like in, in VS Code, because I installed third-party packages, I don't know if you know that there's like a red squiggly line under here. It's because it couldn't find that package. So I had to point over here to the right environment, which in this case, 3.10. And it's, of course, it has that package that I installed. So that's kind of what happened there. So now that I have that, what we want to look into is calling or getting um, instance information. So let's see where is that at. These are all the different methods that are available. Again, some of it is to start the service, you know, delete the service. What I want to do, I want to get the information of the service. So I'm trying to see if there's one, what's in here, right? Um, I'm trying to think what which one what I saw. I saw documentation related to it. Uh, let me see what it is. I think I have it on my other computer open, so I probably could look into that real quick. But let's see if I could find it real quick. So there it goes git git. So this is what I'm looking for. Git git. What is it? What is it called? Git what? Instance type. No, I don't want instant type. I want git console output. Oh man, what it was? What is it called? Let me see. Let me let me look at my other PC. I think I have something open over here. Okay, so I think it's called described instance. So let's go to the D's. Described, where is it at? Described. There it goes, instances. So let's click on this. I just kind of read this real quick. Uh, describe the specific instance of all instances if you specify id instance the output includes information for only the specific instance okay in my case i don't want that i want to get all the information back so if i look at here client dot describe instance you could provide filters which i don't want to so i'm gonna leave it blank instance id would be blank i'm trying to make sure that's not mandatory so filters, what are we filtering by? Available zone. Yeah, again, I, I want to just get back everything. So I don't want to filter by none of that. Okay, max results. Next token. So next token, I believe we have more than one. The token to request the next page of results. Yeah, for the next page. So max results, the value could be between five to a thousand. I'll probably leave mine at a thousand. Dry run. Check whether you have the required permission for this action without actually making the request. So this will be just to to do a test pretty much. So we could do that. Do a dry run and test it out. Uh, describe all your instances. Okay, so this is actually what I what I do want. But okay, so it will be really describe instance with 
uh, I would have probably only put this my max results and then drive run dry run would be true so I'm gonna just take that but I'm gonna clean it up so in this case we'll do something like it would be client dot describe instance I don't want any filters, so the filters got to go. No instance IDs. Dry run is going to be true. I do want it to be true. Max result goes up to a thousand, so I'm going to just leave it at a thousand as well. Give me back everything. And I don't need next token. For now, I'm not going to deal with that. Ultimately, that would be if you have multiple pages, right? Again, I'm assuming nobody has over a thousand, but. So we'll leave it like that for now. Let me rephrase it. I know people out there do have more than a thousand, but in most cases, most people will not. So the only thing I need to test is out. So that's your response is because this is not going to work. If I run it, it's not going to work. And one of the main reasons why is let me go back. Let me go to AWS. So again, I am in my sandbox environment. So because I am in sandbox, I'm not too concerned if I show something that's a little bit more on the sensitive side, which is okay. So I have two users. So this one was part of a video that I made, AWS user test. So let me go ahead and use this one. But man, you know what? I don't know if I have those permissions you know what let me just create a new one i need to create a new one yeah let me create a new one i don't think i have those permissions so what i'm going to do here i'm going to call this um app api api key let's just call it that app api key so this is not enabled we're going to click next um i want to copy permissions from this guy which is s3 no you know what i don't want those permissions never mind let me add on myself so we're gonna click next oops let me go back to previous uh yeah never mind um add user to a group Nope, attach policies directly. That's what I was looking for. EC2. So let's see what we get for EC2 instance. So we have full access, read only. So in this case, I'm going to do read only because I don't want to delete. I don't want to do none of that stuff. All I'm going to do is I want the API key to be able to just read the EC2 instances. So let's do that for now. We're going to add this policy. Uh, create user. So now we have app API key. Let's go ahead and click on it. I'm going to go to security credentials under access key. Let's go to create one. This is going to be for, um, uh, access, uh, application running outside of AWS. So that's kind of what it is, what I'm running an application that's outside of AWS. Click next description. I don't need one. So I'm going to download the CSV file, which has the same name. So now I could take this information again. I'm going to show it on the video because it's sandbox. I'm probably going to delete it once I I'm done with it. It's read only. So if somebody, you know, probably somebody wants to get sneaky and use it, that's totally fine because this is my sandbox environment. And again, if they do something, it's not nothing serious anyways. Uh, so this would be access key. And let's see what's the next one. This one would be secret key. Uh, 
uh, let's call it secret access key. Keep it consistent. All right, so now we have that. Um, so I'm trying to think. So let's see. Let's look at authentication for Boto3 client. All right, so done. Let's go back to this open because I do want to let me open up a new tab so let's see let me search EC2 Working with Amazon EC2 key pairs. Get information about your key pair, create a key pair, delete key pair. ECD2, nope. So let me see. I need to see where. Um, where would this be under? Let's see. EC2. Let's look at EC2. So I don't want to launch an instance. I need to create, I need to connect. I need to get authentication to the instance. That's what I'm trying to do here. Get authentication to the instance. So um let me see let me do some screw you know what let, let's let's see a good old chat gpt could help us out today damn it that's not what i wanted all right so let's do python boto3 um, connect to EC2 with access key. Let's see what, let's see what we get. Okay. So it's actually part of the client argument where you have region name. I knew we had a region name, man. I don't know why I completely forgot about that, but we do have region name. So, so this is valid. This is where I have description instance, which we kind of have, but I did specify some, some parameters and then ultimately we should get back a, uh, an object. We could iterate over there, print everything out. Yes. So we do that. So this is what I need. And this actually does look valid. So I could confirm this is valid and I do remember this. I believe that's valid too. So at least we got some valid results, which is good. Because it's, it's not all the time we get valid results from damn chat GPT. I have been, I have received a few invalid results, put it that way. I actually did a video the other night on the live stream where we asked chat GPT a question. Everything looked valid, but once we ran the code, there was the one part that it gave us a function that doesn't even exist, dude. It doesn't even exist. And we're like, what the hell? After looking at documentation, because again, that's kind of, you got to confirm your, your stuff. We realized, dad, dude, that's not even valid. Like, I have no idea where he even got that from, but it's not even valid, which which is crazy. But either way, again, ChatGPT, I think is good. But, dude, you cannot trust it blindly, put it that way. So, what I'm going to do next is, uh, what region am I in? Let me go to EC2 instance. I am in uh, U.S. West 2. There it goes. U U.S. West 2. And then ultimately I got my access key. 
secret key, response, up to a thousand, print. All right, man, this looks good. So let's test this bad boy out. So they want to do Python test.py. Let's see what we get. Oh. Yo, what up, Breaker? Breaker boy, what up, man? How's your night going? Decided today, man, instead of doing some gaming, uh, I'm actually going to do some coding. So I'm actually going to be building this this um, this app, right, you know, locally that ultimately is able to pull in my uh, AWS EC2 instance information. So I'd be able to kind of have that locally on my, like a local app that I could just run and see all that information kind of like in a dashboard format. So yeah, man, that's what I'm doing today, man. Just kind of doing some coding. Maybe, again, maybe do a little bit of gaming um, towards the end. But yeah, man, doing some coding for sure. Uh, what happened here? Oh, 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 yeah, I did a dry run. My bad. Dry run, flag is set. An error occurred. Dry run operator when calling the description instance request would be, would have succeeded. But dry run frag. Okay, so this is actually, I think it's valid, but it because I have my dry run. So let's remove this. And now let's see what we get. Nice. We got information back. All right, so we did get our data back in a JSON format. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? We have so reservations. Um, where's my instance? This is the one that I just set up right now. So let me do this. Let me copy this. And I'm going to put it into a text editor. Let's copy this bad boy. Let's open up sublime text. Um, so there's a few things I got to do. I'm going to, I want to view this in Java, uh, JSON, my bad in JSON, but I'm going to have to, if it's double quotes, make it single quotes, replace all my bad. Damn it. That's not what I want to do. If it's single quotes, make it double quotes. That's what I wanted. There it goes. And then ultimately this is date time, which is Python object. So that's why this looks kind of funky. And then same thing with true, true and JavaScript. It's not capital. It would have to be lower score and yeah in a yeah in a json object lowercase hold up does this find and replace replace all and then what about true true replace all the only thing is this guy this has to do with date and time uh, attach time. So for now, I'm going to delete this again, cause that's an A and let me go ahead and reformat this indent JSON. Oh, I gotta get rid of this. Damn it, what the hell, man? All right, we still have some more date time somewhere. Yep, there it goes right there. Let's clean this up real quick. All right, we're still, what the hell, man? We have more date times somewhere, I guess. Here, let's do this, man, because I cannot see nothing. Let's go to word wrap. Um, word wrap, there it goes. 
Yep, we got one more right here. All right, so now I should be able to clean. There it goes, clean it up. Yo, I'm back. What's up? What up, Breaker Boy, man? How's your night going? I'm doing good, man. Just tonight doing some some coding. Just kind of been in the coding mood, so I'm kind of building this application uh, where in my so this is my sandbox environment for AWS. Pretty much what I want when I'm building is, is going to be an app where all of my instance information and, and EC2, I want to be able to pull this information and display it locally. And of course, in order to do that, you got to create a, a IAM user setup account first with API um, with, with access keys, which I did. And then, you know, the the goal would be have like a a local app, whether it be a desktop app or a web app, but it needs to run locally um, to be able to um, access this instance, um, this service EC2, and then ultimately pull all of your instances back, right? Whether it's active, not active, you know, all that stuff. So right now I pulled it. This is all the information that I got. So I wanted to look at the data a little bit more clear. So right off the top we have reservations and then inside here we have one object which is pretty much this whole list and then we have some metadata what else do we have just a status code of 200 which is let me you know got respond back successfully um so all of our information going to be under this reservation list object that we have uh good man finally out out of work oh damn ass so you got off a little bit late today was it a late late night for you, man? Do you get off late today? Cause it's kind of late. It's almost what eleven o'clock. Or do you normally work like second shift hours? I'm not sure if that's near your normal schedule or not. It just I, I, at least it feels like sometimes I I um I see you online or like streaming more in the in the evenings. So let's see. We look at our first instance. We have one object. Yep, it just one, which makes sense. So ultimately, we have a reservation list, and then we got another list for instance. So let's keep that in mind. Reservation instance. So if I go back to Python, and you know what? I think ChatGPT actually gave us that information too. Yep, there you go. See reservation instance. That's exactly what I was going to do, and that's exactly what. Uh, chat GPT finally man it actually gave me some some valid results that I could use so let's go ahead and do that uh, no I got out at 6 p.m. but it fell so long oh gotcha man gotcha you doing some streaming tonight are you on right now or you just kind of relaxing tonight So if I iterate over the instance, the instance li key list, this is all the information that relates to this. So I'm trying to now. I want to see what's of value to me, right? What 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 do I want to capture? Uh, for now, what I want to capture will probably be, I will probably capture instance ID for one. I'm just relaxing tonight. I'm half asleep. <laughs> yeah, man, it's one of those days. I know sometimes, um, honestly, man, for me, I would say that's probably Saturday night, man. Like, I feel like I'm so busy Monday through Friday and even Saturday, man. Saturday days, I'm just like, damn, busy, busy, busy doing different stuff, whether it be family or whether it be, you know, making YouTube videos or whatever, right? Just different work or working on projects. Yeah, by the time Saturday night comes, and I don't even, I don't, I'm not talking about late Saturday night either. I'm talking about more like Saturday um, night, like at, um, like at eight, right? You know, eight o'clock at night, maybe nine o'clock at night. Then I'm feeling, I'm like, man, I'm tired. I could feel like the tiredness for the whole week kicking in. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to relax. Like there's times where I even get on, like, you know what? Let me just play some card for a little bit of something 
dude, after one match or two, I was like, yeah, yeah, dude, I suck. I'm tired. I'm just going to call it a night. And normally I just relax, man. I just probably relax by then, you know, give me some popcorn, maybe watch a, a movie or something. And dude, go to sleep and try to get some good sleep. So what I'm thinking here is let's do something like, uh, what do we want to do here? I'm trying to think, um, I could make, a, I could add everything to a list or, or let me think. Yeah. Uh, no, let me, damn it. Damn it. Let me see. Let me see. What can I do? Um, if I add it to a list, it would have to be a list of damn I'm trying to think so let me let me create I'm gonna call this EC2 list so it's gonna be a blank list and then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna call this EC2 list dot append and then inside this list I'm trying to think, um, I'm going to add a dictionary and let's call this, um, uh, instance ID. So I want to capture this instance ID and this would be instance and it would be instance ID, right? And then it would be, what else do I want to capture here? Uh, I'm going to capture that. I'm going to capture instance type. And another thing I want to capture. Uh, let me do this. Oops. This would actually be easier. Let me create a new tab in here. Load it up. Let me move this to the side. There we go. This is a lot better. Now I can kind of see it side by side. And I decide what, what I do want to add or what I do not want to add. So I already said I'm adding instance ID. Let's get, let's get instance type. Right. Instance type. Uh, let's see. Uh, monitoring disable. Nope. So we have network interface. So inside here, what do we have? We have Okay, so we have one object and then from here we got additional object which is application attachment and then group ID okay so I do want this I'm gonna want in this case I'm gonna want public DNS name and IP address so I'm gonna want both of these so let's call this public DNA DNS name we want that and then also, what do we, this is coming from the network interface. And then what else this is coming from association key. And then it's coming from public DNS name. All right. So we're going to do the same thing for the public ID. So I kind of copy everything here with well, the exception is the last piece is going to be public IP. And then of course the name is called public IP. I actually need to change this name. I'm not going to cap and Python. We don't. So again, and, and, and it depends different languages are, are different, but in Python, you normally wouldn't have this 
you know, uppercase. Everything would be more in lowercase and potentially spaced out. In JavaScript, like if we're dealing with JavaScript, a lot of the time it will be a lowercase i. Then this could be uppercase, which is fine. But again, in Python, uh, normally the, again, it still works either way. But best practice, if you want to call it, it's kind of to have everything lowercase. So that's, that's kind of just more of FYI, anybody who, um, who is, inter you know, um, who's interested in learning Python, at least you kind of understand how other developers that code in Python, it's kind of like the standard, like the, the Python way of doing it, if you want to call it right. Um, what else? So I have public IP address. So let's see, what, is, what about attachments? So I don't think I need anything for attachments right now. Uh, interface, network, owner, private DNS. Um, I'm not going to worry about private. I think private probably makes sense, but for now I'm going to leave it out. Private address, which is fine. So let's see what else. Um, placement, there it goes. I want to get placement as well. So in this case, it would be we're gonna be we're gonna get availability zone. So in this case, it would be instance placement. Oh, let me make sure where's placement under is this under network interface oh nope it's not all right cool just want to make sure and then of course it'll be available zone uh platform details we're dealing with linux i'm going to include that just so you know we know what platform we're dealing with here so in this case would be uh platform details uh, platform details okay let's see what else Dude, I just realized public DNS and public address are out here. So I don't need to bring it from the network interface then. Could have just brought it from here. Okay. I don't know why I did not do that. So let me do that. Bring it from here directly. All right, cool. So now that I got that, what else am I missing? Um, the name. This is the name that I want. I want the tag. Now again, you can have mini tags, and this is where it becomes kind of a variable because um, I think this is the name that they call it. So I'm going to leave it as as keyword name so it needs to be a keyword of, of name as well so let me see before I do that security group I want to add that as well so let's let's add um, I'm gonna call this security group ID this would be instance security group uh, here's the thing though let me try to think we could have many security groups um, damn it all right so if we have many security groups it's gonna iterate over that list so Nope, I cannot add that on here. So let me remove that. That's not going to work. So what I'm going to have to do here is, all right, I need some space. 
make it a little bit smaller just so I can see some stuff. So I'm gonna really I'm gonna have to add for tag and security group. I'm gonna have to. I think I'll skip her for now, but I think what I'm gonna have to do. Let me let me just put some notes on her. Some to dos. Uh, to do would be. Um, um let me see what is the first one security group uh loop over security groups and um concat group name to A variable so we have many names I need to kind of put the law together right I don't want to create a new row in my grid for each security group but I want to be able to loop through that concatenate all of those different security groups into one string and then I would just display it and it would just be separated by a comma so again if you have one ES uh, instance that, that has five security groups it'll kind of show you all five security groups that are on there but we'll do that later right add the to-do list for that the next to-do list would be, um, you know what, this one I could actually do right now. Let me do this real quick right now. This one would be, um, let's do instance tags. But here's the thing though, this does not always work because let me try to think. Um, I gave mine a tag name. Not everybody give their tag give, give their instances names. So I'm gonna say for now, let's do zero. And the key name. So let me do if. Um, down. Let me think. Let me think. If it has no tags, this will error out. That's number one. So let me do a try. We're going to try this equals name. And if it does find it, right, if there is some success here, then we're going to assign the variable name is going to be called um, instance name and this will come from the instance tags zero so zero being see how this is a a, a uh, list right that we're iterating over so because of that we're, we're calling this first value in here would be as part of the list index of zero. Then let's say there were more tags. So there'll be like this comma, another set of key value pair comma, so on and so on. Each one will be its own, its own um, index in the list, like, you know, zero, one, two, so forth. So this is coming from zero. Well, here's the thing, it's really not zero, man. They could have more more tags. I won't have to do an iteration over the by key name. Yeah, you know what? Let me just erase it for now, dude. It is gonna take a little bit more longer than what I thought. So that that's not really gonna work. Um let me see. Get um instance name from tag list. Um when key name is name all right so we'll come back to that later let me go ahead and save this real quick um and let's run it uh, but you know what before we run it let's print it we want to print out this list 
that we have here. So let's print it down here. Save. And let's run it, see what we get. So as you could tell, we have this list now that ultimately has a dictionary. In this case, the first item happens to be the first, you know, the, the EC2 instance that we have, which is this guy here when we have one. If we had more than one, you know what? This is, I want this too, this running instance. I should have checked to see where where that status of that. Boom, there it goes, run in state, code 16. So I'm gonna I need to check what this really what this means because I'm assuming when it's off it's a different code. I don't know I don't know what what it is, but it's a different code. Um since this is one this is not a list, this is just an object. You know what? It doesn't matter. Now that I think about it, it doesn't matter what the code is. I just need to get the name. Never mind. So this is gonna be state. So let's call that then state and name. Um, instant state, instant state, instance state, right? Is that what it was? Yep, there it goes right there. I see it. Instant state, a uh, name, my bad. That's what, it, what I was thinking of. I need name. So this will tell me whatever that is. You know, this case happens to be running. It's in running status. Yep, running, cool. So let me run this again. I just want to make sure that I see that in there. Boom, instant status running, got it. So now we got that in there. So we got some key pieces of information here, right? We have available zone, uh, instance type. We have IP address, right now public, but probably need to add a private as well. We have platform details, and we have instance type. Is it running, is it not running? So this is for the, for the I mean, there's other information I think we could for sure add. But I think we have, like, I do want to add this, the name, and also, also the security group. But besides that, those are the key items. Some of the other items that we could potentially run is kind of like the VPC ID. Uh, what else can we put in here that makes sense? Um, Probably private IP address as well. Um, I think for the most half though, that should be fine. Maybe subnet, but that's the only thing I can think of, man. That makes sense to kind of add on there. Everything else is not necessarily needed, I don't think. All right, cool. So I think I think we have enough. Uh, volume ID is actually a good thing to add on there too, but I won't add it on there now. That's something we could add later because I do see it's part of this list object here. So I need to see, and the reason why this, it's a list object because we could have many volumes tied to it. So again, this goes back down to, it has to be a process to iterate over this and all of the volumes IDs kind of put them together and comma separate them. And so if there is more than one, you know, so again, instance and groups. All right, cool. So I think this makes sense, man. So I think what we have gives us back what we need. The, the main thing that would see here that we're dealing with is pretty much three parameters. We need to specify the region because there are different regions, right? If I were to go back and we take a look at our instances, these are all the regions that we have available, right? Now, these are not available because they're different countries, but the one that are available to me, pretty much even these here. Um, so yeah, man, so the, the only one that of course we use here in the US, or I use anyways, would be these. 
But there's these other ones for people that are working international, other companies and so forth. But still, man, you need to be able to spe specify the region, access key, secret key, and then of course, the, in this case, the service is EC2. So I think what we have works. It gives the back information that we need, um, which is good. So I think the next thing is, um, to start building this out. And I'm trying to think what makes sense in this case, maybe. Maybe a Flask application, I think would make sense. Something basic, simple. I'm not, again, it's a desktop app. You just kind of run, operate. So let's go ahead and install pip install Flask. So again, Flask is a framework for web development. Um, I think this will be the easiest in a way. It's create a, uh, basic web interface it's very easy to you to get started in this case with flask um, because it's very for at least for now again we may expand for now we're going to be dealing with really with one app one page um the source code on what we're doing it's actually not that complex pretty straightforward on what we're doing so what I'm going to do now is let's create a app file, right? So let's kind of walk through the process, man. If we go to Python flask, let's just look at the documentation real quick, right? Let's look at some examples. Um, just kind of show you it's actually not too hard to get installed. I already installed the flask package, right? You kind of probably saw me go through it right now and pip install flask so i did that already so we're good uh, the next thing is let's kind of look over the documentation um quick start so this is really it when you think about it and i think for us we'll keep it basic but we could always expand onto it if it gets like we're dealing with many many web pages and things of that nature but i don't think there's a need to do anything too complex so it's going to be i think for now pretty basic so it's literally, we import in our package. Uh, we we create an app by initiating Flask, and then we'll call that object app. And then from here, we create our routes. Routes are gonna be like our URL, right? Like whatever the URL pass is gonna be. And then ultimately we have, we give it a function of what, what that is. And then you kind of do some action to it, right? So that's this is like the basics of it. Now, in our case, obviously we're doing a little bit more than just that. We, we are going to be um, returning back HTML templates. So I need to put something together for that. Um, but let's go ahead and get our, our app in order. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the core of what we need, which is this pretty much. So let me go ahead and copy that. I got my app and we're going to call this function, which is going to be for now. It's our main URL. So I'm going to call this EC2 um, instances or instance. Um, in this case, we have a lot of this code that we have here, right? So what I'm going to do in here is going to be So here's the thing I'm, I'm trying to keep it simple for now, but we could expand on to it Norm I, I will say normally if I was building something production grade and something that's I know is going to be growing something big I did what you probably do in this case is I'll have a file for my EC2 activity, you want to call it, right? Everything that relates to EC2. Um, again, my access key and secret code would not be hard-coded in here. 
these would be variables, um, environment variables that would be part of that, that ultimately will live somewhere else. And the application will pull that information through to be able to use it and do what it needs to do. But in this case, because it's not going to be as big and just we could do something quick, I'm actually going to take this code and we're going to put it under the application. How I said, we could probably expand it and separate it later if needed to. But I think for now, to keep it simple, we're going to put all of that together. So I'm going to go ahead and take my access key. Take everything and we're going to put this under here. All right, cool. So again, when this executes, when again, when I say executes, it would be, um, what would it be for now? It would be a get request, but we would have to add on to it. So let's see. Um, let me check something real quick. Oh, what am I doing, man? Okay, so this is what I was looking for. So like in this case, uh, this would actually need to be, I'm going to call this, um, it would have to be get and post method. So under the routing, which will be up here on top, we will call this method. Dude, that's not what I wanted. This is where auto completion sucks sometimes. The hell, man, what did it do? Hold up. So, this case will be get post. Um, get oops, my bad, I forgot an S. It's methods with an S. Why am I still have? Oh, my bad. This is not needed. There it goes. Yep. So the reason why is because when we do a get for this URL, which again, it's the main URL, it should be pulling in some kind of template. And if we do a post, it's going to do some action against the post, right? So for example, let's, I'm going to make this. Um, if request mess, damn it. It did it again. What the hell, man? If request, what the hell, dude? Uh, if request a message equals post. Uh, why am I getting red squiggly line under request? What happened here? Uh, this is odd. What's what's happening here, guys? 
Uh, am I missing something? Uh, method equals post dude why am I getting a rec rec request is not oh my bad duh cause I didn't import it in it's my mistake I need to import this in so this would be part of the part of the flask and then it will be a request that's why damn it so another thing I need to bring in too is going to be a uh, render template um, and let's bring in redirect as well okay so now that we have that so we have so what I'm saying here is if request happens to be a post I wanted to execute all of this here Right, so let me remove this and put all the tab this over. So I wanted to request all of this, okay? Um, else, else is going to mean in this case that it's part, it's actually a uh, get a method. So the get method would be where it actually returns back a template in a return, right? So I don't have any templates right now created. So we do need to create some templates. So this is where the whole HTML comes in. Um, so we're probably, what we may end up doing, man, just try to get some bootstrap, something very basic, very straightforward. So let's take a look at that real quick. Let me save this. And let's take a look at Bootstrap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use their um, Uh, let's see. So I should be able to get this from their CDN. So this is for styling, CSS, JavaScript. Uh, what else? Let me see. Bootstrap, styling, uh, JavaScript. I think that's it, man. And then starter starter template here. So the starter template has the CSS. Yep, it has this already. Have the JavaScript. All it has is hello world title. So I'm gonna use this as a starter starter template. So let me go ahead and get this. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna create uh we're gonna call this. Let me close out of this. I don't think I need this anymore. Don't save. I'm trying to make it a little bit more bigger. But this is actually getting a bit big. I think I know why. So let me, I guess, change the font. There it goes, 20. Let me change this to 16. So we're gonna create another file and this one would be our, what do we wanna call it? Uh, I'm gonna call it index for now, HTML. Normally, this is where you kinda of have your, your um, what I wanna call um, your main template and then you kinda of add on to it. So let's see. So our index, this is pretty much our index here. The title, I'm gonna call it, what do we call this? AWS 
Um, services dashboard, right? Something basic for now. So this is our index file. Should be very basic and straightforward. What I'm going to do here is um, let's go ahead and create. Man, should I have done it that way? I'm trying to think now. I should have. Let me do it right. The right way would be let me create a folder. And this folder, we're going to call it templates. Let me close out of this. We're going to move the index inside templates. Inside the template folder, I'm going to create a, um, I'm going to call it components. Hold on, let me check something real quick. Yep. Okay. Never mind. I just wanted to confirm something real quick. Uh, what do I say? Yeah. Components. And then inside here, ultimately what we're doing is we'll create another file. Oh, this is a full file. What am I doing? You know what? I don't think we need to that. I think I'm overcomplicating if I do it that way. Let me just create another file. It will be underscore nav bar HTML, right? So we're going to have some HTML that will be strictly for a nav bar only. And then we would have our index file. Then we're also going to have another file. And this, and this file would be for EC2. I'm going to call it HTML, right? For EC2 HTML. So since, since we have this nav bar, right? If I go back to my HTML, I don't, I'm going to remove this. I don't want that title, but one of the things that I'm going to be doing here is I want to include this file. Where is it at? This file in here. So in order to do that, we will do this percent sign space. Uh, include, include, and then we got to specify what are we going to include. So in my case, it's going to be underscore uh, nav bar dot HTML. Because again, I'm in, it's already this index. It happens to be in the template folder. So it's actually looking inside this folder. So I'm going to specify this file and this is what I want. Nav bar dot HTML. So that's going to be for the nav for the body. There is what's called block. I'm going to call this context. And then I got to close this out as well. I'll explain this in a little bit. Um, block. So ultimately what this is saying is whenever we specify, let's say uh, EC2 instance page, like I want to render this page. Ultimately what's going to happen is this code in like the HTML syntax in here will be strictly related to the EC2 only. I'm not, I'm not writing the nav bar stuff in here or anything of that. And I, the reason why you do that is if let's say you have a website that has like in my case, let's say I create a page for EC2, a page for S3, a page for Lambda, a page for glue, etc. Right? I have many different pages. Well, the last thing you want to do is to copy your nav bar and HTML and you're copying it many times to each page. And then one day you got to make an update to your nav bar. But now you have to go and literally go to every single page and update it in there too. So the way you optimize that, right, is you create it once. And as you create it once, you, you, you reuse it many times. Like right now, I'm going to reuse it in here. Well, when it comes to my blog, my context, this is saying, hey, I'm going to call this page, this HTML, HTML page. But this HTML page is going to be pointing to this and it's going to populate its information in here, under here. So, I mean, we'll kind of walk through that and you'll kind of see in a minute 
on um what I mean by that. So for for example, um let me go to my EC2 instance. We are going to have this extends. Extends means go ahead and extend this code that's going to be between these brackets, which would be in block. So anything that's inside here, right, it's going to ultimately take this this uh, HTML uh, context and it's going to find this HTML page, which is index, and and ultimately going to replace this tag, like everything. It's going to replace this with everything that's in between that. And see how we have the word context. So let's say if I would have changed this to data, that's fine, right? You call it whatever you want, but I have to call it over here data as well, right? So they have to be the same name. So that's just something to keep in mind. The standard is called context and that's kind of like, again, best practice. So that's kind of what you see. So I'm gonna stick to with standard, which is that, right? So, uh, let's see. Now for my nav, it's a little bit different. My nav, I just need to uh, specify what, what that is, right? So in order to do this, Let's go back to Bootstrap and let's find some, let's find a nav, right? Let's go to, let's see, what are we dealing with? Um, where's my nav, nav bar, there it goes, nav bar. So let's take a look at what's here. Again, we're not, nothing fancy, it's something basic. That's all we're looking for. Um, let me see. So we have search here, but this is for nav. I don't need a search in the nav. Uh, I just need something basic. Something like this will be, I think, pretty straightforward. Let me try to, I'm trying to think if I need a drop down. Um, I just do something basic, man, like, like this. Now there are different features here as you could tell. So this is like the, um, you want to call it the, the home page or whatever, the, the main section of it. Then of course you have your actual links. So let's just copy this and I'm going to copy this to my nav HTML. In this case, instead of calling it nav, I'm going to call it AWS services dashboard and ultimately this is a um, this would I'm trying to think this would take you to your home page so in, in our case uh, let me see real quick uh, we don't have a true home page here yet we should, but we don't have one. So for now, I'm just going to specify, uh, this case will be URL uh, for, and then it this in this case, it will be the name. So for example, in our case, it would be this EC2 instance. If we did have a homepage, it would be whatever that, that the name happens to be. So we obviously later on change it to whatever it should be. But for now, we just will call it that, right? Um, and then, yes, like I'm gonna call the first page. So let me copy this, cause I'm gonna need this again. This will go under this first href. Again, all of these a tags. Again, those of you who are new, a tags are pretty much like hyperlinks in your in in web. Kind of kind of what it is, right? They're hyperlinks. They're links, better not hyper. They're links in your web page. So I'm going to call this EC2 because it relates to EC2. And then, um, 
So I don't need none of this to be honest with you. I'm going to delete all of this here. So we have the disable one. I don't need the, that. So these other ones would be, but we have other ones, right? Let's say we had S3. I don't know what else. I'm trying to think what else. Um, let's say glue. So let me just type glue, right? So now. Let's see. So like, for example, under this, let's say if I were to do return uh, render template, I'm going to render, what is my template? I'm going to render ec2.html. Um, so if I render that, let me just try to think. I'm not going to have any data right now, but it is, it is going to extend our index page, which does have a nav at least right at the minimum. We have the nav bar. So let's just run it. Let's see what we get. So if I were to run this, it would be Python app dot PY. Oh, oh dude, did I forget that I did? Damn it. Um, yep, I forgot. So at the end, whenever we create our application, we have our instance and we have our first URL. Um, toward the bottom, there's something we kind of add toward the bottom. We would do if name equals equals main. And then it will be app run. Uh, we got to specify the port that we want this to run in. So let's say in this case, I'm going to call it 8802. And then I'm going to say debug equals true, right? Debug equals true. So there's any errors. We want to be able to see it. So as you can see, when it runs, it gives me the, um, the, the address. So I'm going to click on it so you could open up. So boom, here you go. Right, right now, very simple, basic. Cause we don't have nothing, but we have our, our, um, our nav on top, which is very straightforward and basic. See how it kind of collapse and become the list, which is exactly what we want, right? That's why we use bootstrap because it's mobile friendly. And, uh, but yeah, it does what it's supposed to do. So ultimately this is doing what we kind of, we, what, what we want it to do. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we know that if we were to hit do a post, we would get back some information back. Um, but we need to pass in information too. Like for example, one piece of information that we want to have as an option is going to be this region name. So the users could select from a drop down list. So again, let's go back to bootstrap and let's see what we could find related to some kind of forms or um because we do need to submit it right we need to be able to select it from a drop down then hit a submit button to submit this off so this will probably be under forms or let's look at input groups let's see if we have any that have any buttons in here that we could use So like this case, no, that's not what I want. That's fine. Let's look at forms is really what I'm looking for though. Overall. So let's look at forms. See how we have a field password and submit. I want something in a, uh, I guess it doesn't matter how I get it. Uh, let's see. So see how this one we it's um form grid let's 
there it goes like in this format so we have a the form form remember submit uh, this example below uses the flexbox to vertically send the context and it changes. Here it goes. See how we have a drop down here. So this is kind of really what I want here to be exactly. So I'm going to actually copy this. So let's copy this here for now. Um, and again, man, I will spend more effort in it, but I'm kind of just trying to slap something together somewhat quick. Um, but let's try to make it at least somewhat decent anyways. So I have my form. Let's look at what is it called there? It's a it's a card, I believe. We got context in the body. So one thing that I want to do too, if I go back to my this code, so let I'm gonna do a div. And let me add an in div. To close it out. We're going to do and let me add a class. Um uh, we're going to add Why do I need to install this package, man? I'm trying to think what's going on here. Let me see. Look at my extensions real quick. Related to nothing's auto completing at all. I'm trying to think why. Why is nothing working? So let me get this installed. See if this helps out. Cool, let me close out of this. Dude, this is not it, man. What the hell? Uh, we'll come back and look at cards. Let's look at... Let me see. Is it under? Uh, where is it at? Let me try to think. Let me see. Um, duh, it's not under boost, right? What am I talking? I mean, I guess it is, but that's never mind. Um, Oh, I thought, never mind. Yeah, let me, let me see something real quick. I feel like I'm missing something, but I'm not. Damn it, what the hell, man? Yeah, just container. That's what I was, okay, never mind. It just, I just need to do call this container. That's fine. Have our form. So like for now, if I save this, let me just rerun this for now. Now we get that, right? The drop down and all of that. Now, ultimately this I want to fix as well. I don't like that my drop down is only small. Let's do columns auto.
Let me see. I would probably do something like auto column four. Make it a little bit more bigger, probably not that big. Let me see how it looks when I minimize it. Oops. Okay, so it does get smaller. Yeah, no, that's, that's actually good. But you know what, this is, I don't want, uh, damn. That's fine. I'll play. It's supposed to be desktop app anyway. It's not mobile, so that's fine for now. I don't need this. That could go away. So this checkbox could go away. I don't need that. Then I'll, and then I have a submit button, and that's fine. That could stay. That could actually stay. Uh, let's see. So if I go back to my form, um, so the action in here is going to be, uh, the URL that I have. So let's look at that piece real quick. So let's see. So in this case, we would call, let's see, curly brackets, curly brackets, URL from and this would be EC2 instance. I think that's what I called it, right? Yep, EC2 instance. So again, if I hit that button, it's gonna call this, and the method, it's going to be post. What else? Now, Whatever I'm posting is going to be posting whatever's here, right? So I have an ID. I'm going to call this. So this is where I want to call this region. And this would be different regions, right? So let's call this US. Let's kind of go down the list to see what of our, I'm going to just name a few of the regions that we have. So for example, we're going to get these regions right there. So let me just move this to the side. What the hell, man? Oh, am I, uh, never mind. Mm, let me close out of this. Oops, it's not good. Let me go back. All right, that's what I wanted. It's... All right, cool. So now we got a few set. So let's kind of, the value, my bad, the value would be U.S. Uh, let's see the first one, U.S. East 1. And that would be U.S. East in dot Virginia. All right, that would be one option. Second option would be U.S. East Ohio. Oops. All right, there goes Ohio. With the value, the value would be called U.S. 
Damn, I didn't spell this wrong, right. This would be U.S. East 2. The third option would be, let's see, what do we want to call this? U.S. West in dot uh, California. Dude, did I spell it right? Uh, yeah, I did. All right, so this value would be U.S. West 1. And then the fourth value would be, we would call this Oregon. This would be West 2. All right, now that we have that in order, um, let's see. Let me see. All right, so this one would be, I call this region, but I also need to give it a name. So the name here would be region yeah, just region. Let me call it region. That's fine. Submit. Uh, let me try to think. So the label would here would be region. But let me see how that looks. Uh, hold on. What is this label for again? I don't even see this label nowhere. Like what the hell? Oh, because I did change the name to region, but still, let's see. Um, hmm. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, let me see. So we get a post. So he'll put it this way. So we know we're getting this selection right the select list which i call region so if i go back to my app under post we want that to be an option right so it will be um in this case it would be request form dot get then i'm going to specify the name which in this case would be called region um if nothing selected then I'm going to just call it uh, blank. And now this region name would come down here. It would actually replace my US West 2 because it's part of the form now. So let's see. This will go away eventually, but for now, for, for testing, that could stay. So I'm adding this to that. Um, let me see about that. Mm. So what I'm going to do here is once it's done, we would end up doing a a return a render template. In this case is going to be the EC2 template as well. EC2.html. But we're going to have a data argument. So I'm going to call this right now. I'm just going to call it data equals uh, EC2 list, which is pretty much this list that we're going to be passing in. Right. So now that we passed in a list, 
if I come back over here. But before we do this, let's look at Bootstrap. And we're going to get a basic. Uh, where's our table? Table, table. Dude, they're, they don't have a table example anymore. What the hell? There goes tables, tables, tables. All right, tables. So we have a basic table here. So let's get something with a with a header color for now, right? Something not too much. Um, table header option. Let's see what we have. See, I like this one. See, we kind of hover over it as well. So, do we have a color header? See, this is smaller too. I like it a little bit more thin as well. It's a small table, but it doesn't hover. But you know what? I think it's literally just small table, small. So let me take the one that we saw here. I'm going to copy this. Let's go to our source. I'm actually going to put this below. So we have our container here. I'm going to create another section here for table. Let's create a div. container class uh, and then let me go ahead and copy this now in our case I need to see what we're going to be pulling so for example we have instance ID so let me copy that so that would be one header instance ID uh, instance type what else let's do public dns let's do uh public id Damn, what else do we have? Let me see. Availability zone. So let me put this to the side. There it goes. Damn it, that's not what I wanted. So let's do availability zone. Platform details, instance state. All right, so we got all the items in here. Now this piece under the body, this piece, we would do some sort of iteration, right? So the way we would do that would be Uh, let's see. Let me see what what did I call it over here? It's data EC2 instance list. No, you know what? That's not right. What I need to do here is I'm going to call this data as well. Then inside here, I'm going to have my, um, uh, what 
don't want to what, what do I want to call this um my I guess call it data set and I'm gonna call this ec2 list and the reason why I'm gonna do it this way is because now if I ever need to pass pass through more objects I could just add more objects whatever it is right key name something right whatever it is so that means for I'm gonna have to do a a for loop so it will be for um, let's call it EC2 in data dot uh, data set okay and inside here we're gonna have our T TR tag we're going to have our TH tag and then damn it and then of course we need to close that close out our TR tag this could go away hold on let me think let me think yeah yeah no no that can't go away I need this what am I talking about and that's it all of these other ones could go away that's what I meant and then of course at the end I would have a I gotta end it in in down in for pretty much the same the for loop is done right so you gotta end it so let me remove this scope I don't need that so in here this is where I'm gonna be I'm gonna have to call my um, let me try to think so as I'm calling each item it would be EC2 and then it would be dot instance ID EC oh my bad the this is not right um I need to do this I forgot to put that in there so I need my brackets EC2 dot instance type so before I do this to all of them they just check to see if this works right they just kind of go through that process and try to confirm does this work so let me see I need to restart the application let's refresh uh, we got an error what happened here in block Gen oh I added a comment it doesn't like comments for some reason I don't know why but it doesn't data what happened here data set data set oh duh I know why this piece here this this bottom piece here right which is for the container this should only be executed um, if it's a post right only if it's a post so let me do something like if request dot method equals post
in F statement. So now let's r refresh. There it goes. So now if I were to select a West, US West, hit submit. Boom, we got data back. We got data back, guys, and we actually got back the right data too. Nice. So now let's finish this off. So EC2 um, public DNS name. Let me switch keyboards, man. I'm actually, the keyboard kind of sucks now. I'm going to use the new keyboard I have. I may actually use this for work, but I'm going to use it now. So let's see. It's a lot quieter too, that's for sure. Uh, EC2 public IP. All right. EC2, what is this? Availability. Availability zone. Oops. EC2 uh, platform details. And then the final one is going to be EC2 instance state all right so now we got that we're going to do another submit boom we have all of our information make this bigger nice so see prop i know i put it in a container what i think i need to do i need to i need to make it a bit wider because we know we have more data so it makes more sense to if i go to my my class container fluid and now let's refresh oops so let's do a west boom there it goes see how it's not wider now but now we have all of our data right that we that we want it gives us our my the instance the instance type ip address and so on again guys this is our test environment so a lot, this instance will get shut down, which is why I'm not really too concerned about sharing some of this information. Normally, you don't really share this kind of information if it's something serious, but in this case, it's a sandbox environment, and plus, I'll be shutting it down soon. So let's do something else. I'm What I'm going to do, if, if I go back, I want to create another instance. Man, I want to see two instances in here, right? So let's launch another instance. I'm going to launch, let's do a, yeah, let's do Ubuntu. This is a, for sure a lot cheaper. Um, yep, let's do that. One, we, yep, micro, perfect. I'm going to just select key value pair that we have already. Um, yep, yep, all of that's good. Let's launch it. Cool, launch successfully. Let's view it. And then we had refresh. Is it booting up or what is it doing? So I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call this uh, Linux Sandbox 2. All right, so it's initiating. So I don't know if it will show up in our app, but we could try it. Let's see if, we, if our app shows it. Boom, our app did show it. Nice. So our app was able to find that, give us the information. And uh, yeah, boom, there's our public IP address. Now there's other features that I think if if, it, if I expanded on this, 
uh, that I will add on to it. Like I'll add like a copy button or make this copyable where you just click it and it copies to your clipboard. Um, but yeah, guys, this is exactly what I was looking for, right? Again, UI needs to be cleaned up. It's not there from a UI perspective. I get it, right? But I think the focus for now would be um, be probably keep it web. Uh, it needs to be, so here's the thing, in order to be able to access the servers anyways, your device has to has to be in a network that has access to AWS resources. So even though I generated the user account with API access, like access keys, that's a piece of it, but you still need to be able to, um, to be part of that network. So you gotta be, if you're like at home, your home IP address needs to be accessible to AWS um, VPC and so forth, right? So, um, but you know, one, one thing that I, I kind of, I just thought about that I need to include on here, there needs to be a, an a ability to add users, like to s configure your account. In this case, it would be to apply your access key and so forth. So what, I, what I'm gonna do here is, let me go to my, my nav for now. And I'm gonna copy this and let's do something like, um, um, let's call it settings for, or, um, let's call it settings. That's fine. I'm gonna call it settings right for now. So we call it settings. It will be a page that will take us related to settings. Let me add some some spacing though, man. So let me do uh, maybe like padding left, and I'm gonna make it five. So if I do that, if I hit refresh, oops, let me hit home. You see, it gives some spacing to it. And right now, it's just a link. So click on it; doesn't do nothing. But ultimately, we would create a page. Um, 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 let me try to say, think. So let's see what we get if we select the region we don't have no data for. Okay, no data, which is which is good because there is no data, right? That totally makes sense. We don't have no data, no data, but we click on uh, US. Yep, that makes total sense. Perfect. Let's see what else. So again, settings would be where we could apply our access keys. So that would be, in my opinion, a very basic form. So let's go ahead and do something with that, right? So let's go ahead and under templates, I'm gonna just create a file. I'm gonna call it settings.html for now. The only thing that we're probably gonna have here that I could think of would be, uh, let me do, I don't like the, the way it's auto-completing though, man. It kind of, kind of sucks, man, for some reason. And I'm not sure why I can't, I'm not, I don't know why the auto-completion is not working on this. Um, I don't know if it's related to like, let me un uninstall some of these. Let me see what else do I have, man. There has to be some kind of conflict of interest of some sort. Let me see. How do I look at everything that's installed? It's probably what I need to look at it. 
Um, show running extensions. All right, so let me. Uh, it doesn't let me do nothing with this. Start extension. Let me see if I could find that one. Uh, what is this called? Reload required. Let's do a reload. Oh, there it goes. Installed extensions. Dude, it's right here. I don't know how I missed it. So like class, let me uninstall this. Something causes some kind of conflict, man. I know it is. I just don't know what it is. Um, let me uninstall this. Let me uninstall this. Let me uninstall this. What else? Let me uninstall that. Dude, there's way too much stuff installed on here that I have no idea why. Let me uninstall this. Oh, never mind. That's not even installed. I'm going to uninstall this. All right. I think that's about it. Okay. So now let me go back to book to extensions. Uh, that's through HTML and it's what we could find. So this is a big one right here. So let me go back and install this one. And let's see if this fixes that my issue that I have. So for settings, how I mentioned, we're going to do div. What the see again, man, doesn't do nothing. I don't get it, man. I'm not sure why it's like damn extension are not working. Or uh, there's a few that may be causing issues with other ones. Who knows, man? I have no idea, but so let's create a class uh, container should be fine. Inside of here, we will need, what do we need? We need to have a form. So let's go back to bootstrap and let's look at components, forms. Really will be something exactly like this. Dude, this is exactly what we need right here. Exactly, so I'm gonna copy this. Let's paste it in here. All right. So obviously we're going to have to make some changes. 
some of the changes here would be, for example, um, access key. What else? And this, we don't need this. So for this, what is it? Input type is email. That's not right. It's not email. It would be text or do I want to, let me try to think. You know what? I'm going to make it password. And the reason why password, because I don't want it to show anything, right? It will kind of hide it. So we're going to call this, uh, what do I want to call this? Access key. Um, call it access key. That's what this is going to be for ID of the access key. And then this would be the name would be access key as well. Uh, we don't need this. Let's remove this for now. All right. The next piece would be, this would be secret access key. Secret access key. Uh, let's call this. Again, secret access key. And then, of course, the name would be the same thing. Secret access key. This will be password. So we don't see nothing. And then we do not do not need this. We have the submit button down below. So now let's look at our form. Uh, this would be method post. So we also need an action, right? For our form. Now we don't have one right now for our action, but we do need one. Um, So if I go back to my app, just like the way we have this route here, I want to create a new one. This new one will be called app route and it would be settings. So we're going to call it in the URL and this would be a method of both get and post, right? And then we're going to call this, uh, I just call it settings. Uh, hold on guys. All right. So same thing with this, right? I'm going to do if request dot message equals post, right? As an example, I do something, whatever that something is. And we'll, we'll get, we'll get to that in a minute. What we're going to do else, let me do this. Um, get, uh, get method would be else. In this case, we would, uh, return render template and the template that we're going to render is going to be settings. HTML and that's what we're going to get back. 
So now we have settings here, right? So let me go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna go down to my nav bar. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it in here. This would be URL for settings, right? That's number one. Let me add an S at the end there. Next, I'm gonna go to my settings under action. It's gonna be the same thing. It would be a URL for settings. So when I when I hit submit, it's gonna submit it to that URL. So let's see. Now that I have that in order, this in order. What the hell happened here? Uh, where's my error? Why, why am I getting an error here? Oh, I spelled this wrong. Damn it. There it goes. So now let me run it again. So now if I come back here, we go to settings. Oops. Oh, duh. You know what I forgot? So if I go back, let's see. I could tell you what I forget. If I look at my, my, where is the EC2? See you in the very top. I have this where I'm extending this HTML to this other index HTML. So I need to, I need to do the same thing here. I did not do that. I need to extend this out. And then of course I have my block context and which mean again, if I look at my EC2, if I go all the way down to the bottom, I, I'm going to have my end block. So let's go ahead and copy that and that will go towards the end. So now if I refresh, there it goes. At least we get our header and better, you know, it looks a little bit better too and all of that. So this is where we, we gonna wanna take in our access key and secret key and be able to save it. Um, and ultimately as we save it, we're gonna wanna use it throughout the application. Anytime we run it, we're gonna have to pull that information out. So in order to do this, I'm just trying to think through it. Um, There's a few ways. I'm trying to think of something that would be basic, but good enough. It would be ultimately doing um, encrypting and then decrypting these values, right? So we have to have a process where we encrypt. Uh, we would we take this file, we encrypt it, we save it somewhere. Uh, it probably be saved in the same folder of the application, and then we would decrypt it, decrypt it once we need it. Um, so I have done some projects where I have done that, but it's been a while. Let's see. Um, So there's like there's a uh, cryptographic um, package that we could use to do that, right? To kind of get that installed. Um, hmm. Oh damn, my phone died. All right, let me let it charge. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to play around with that a little bit for now.
So I want to play around with that because I think what we would do in this case would be as, you know, let's say if I enter in my access key and secret key, because you want to enter it in once you hit submit or save, right? And then it would save, it would encrypt it first. Uh, and then ultimately when you encrypt it, it will be some kind of weird binary string value, right? Very long. Um, but ultimately that would get saved out to a text file, potentially some kind of file Like you got to save it somewhere, you know, uh, normally when you're dealing with a database and things of that nature, then yeah, you could encrypt it, save it to a database and so forth. In this case, it's a machine. This app is going to run locally. So it's either in ha creating a SQLite file, which is doable. And then I'm just trying to think if that's an overkill or not for what we're trying to do. But that, that is an option. So even if somebody connects to that SQLite database, again, they're, they're going to see the data, but it's going to be encrypted. So unless they know the key to decrypt it, they won't be able to do it. Um, just trying to think through this. Uh, let's see. Hmm. So either, I guess I need to think about it. I know to decrypt it and encrypt it. I got the, the gist of how to do that. I I'm thinking, let me see something real quick. Um, let's see. Let me see. That's what it did. You know what? This would that makes sense. So maybe I'll do it the same way. Hmm. Let me see which package that I use here to do this. Yeah, I did you that crypto graphics. Yep, package. I may do the same thing here. So I'm kind of looking at another project that I wor worked on a while back. And ultimately what I did there was I as users entered in inf like password information into the UI cuz this this was a desktop application as well. And they hit saved. It took it took many values, not just it took some values that require encryption, but it took also other values that did not require encryption. But nevertheless, it took all of these values. It saved it to this. Think of it like a text file, pretty much. But when it came to the password, ultimately it was a key value pair, right? You have a key, then you have the, the value, like equals the value. And and the, the items that were sensitive were encrypted. So you do see the text, but it's like bunch of gibberish, right? You know, just like A, B, capital Z, plus whatever. There's all kinds of random randomness because, again, the password got encrypted. And ultimately, when the application uh, needs to run the process and needs credentials to do it, it's able to take that encrypted value and then the application has the decryption um key if you want to call it right to be able to to decrypt it 
Uh, yep, it does have the key. Uh, let's see. There it goes. Key, key. That makes sense. Well, it makes sense and it doesn't make sense. It's kind of... You need the key to decrypt it. But the key is also saved in the application. So, in theory, they, they have the key. If the key is there to use, then, yeah, that really doesn't work. Um... Hmm, let me see something else under my decryption configuration that I have here. So it's reading the key, then it, it, it encodes the key. And then I'm reading the line. That makes sense. Once I get into the password, I do a decryption of the password. And where does this key come from? Yep, it comes from that. Yeah, this doesn't work, man, because... I mean, it does work, but it doesn't work because the key will be saved internally. And honestly, that, does, that doesn't work. At least if it's a compiled application... You could have the key part of the application. Hmm. Yeah, I need to figure out what's the best way to do that. All right, let me go. I'm going to take a quick little break, guys, and uh, I'll be back. So quick break. What time is it? It's already 12.48. Take a quick break. Dude, we made some good progress. I got to say, man, just looking at this so far, added a settings page, added an EC2 page. If I choose a region where I don't have no nothing running, nothing, but if I click a region that does, boom, I get my information. So at least I know what it is. So this comes in handy. Show, it tells me that it's running. Obviously, there's things that I would add to fine tune it. Like, for example, you know, if it's running, add like a little running plus icon here, right? So that's where I will get some font icons included. Maybe make this green as well. Do, you know, add, change it up some, put something, you know, add on to it. I would make this where you could copy the IP address. So if you need it, you could copy it. Uh, what I will I'll probably do as well here would be add some other there's other stuff to add like you're trying to SSH to this server right you know be able to have the ability where it shows here you can just copy it you can just copy that SSH to be able to connect things of that nature right um, or have the ability where maybe you click on it and it op takes you to another another page to SSH or the even open up the terminal and try to connect connect you to it automatically, things of that nature. So again, those are all extra. I want to get the basics down. And but now I like it, man. I think so far this works. Then I also want to play around with like S3 bucket. Can we list all the S3 buckets? Can we interact with it where we see a bucket, be able to click it and go into the bucket? Or at least show some kind of tree view or something, right? And that would help from a sense of when we're trying to see um see if you know there's files and folders in these buckets but either way god let's take a quick little break and i'll be back in a few minutes
All right, I'm back. All right, let's see what we're gonna do here. Um, okay, so we have this. Uh, of course, there's a few things we may add on to it and, and so forth, but I think overall what we have works. Um, let's see. Setting again, this is where we have our key act secret key. The thing about this piece is So here's the thing it is a web app But we could compile this down to like an executable file now even when we do that if it's going to be generating files because of the password I'm just trying to think through on so what I'm thinking what we may need to do here would be I could probably use some of the source code that I have on for this other project that I worked on but we'll need to tweak it where I have Ultimately, I would have this config file. It would generate the, this config file. It would have some, in this case, we're, we're technically going to have these two values. But if there was any other kind of key information that we need to save, does it have to, even if it's not stuff that needs to be encrypted, uh, we can. Like for a good example, maybe we would default specific um like a region right that could be part of our our setting where we're going to default region so like good example would be let's go to settings um i'm going to add another option here to let's call this default region right this would be a text default region and we're going to call this default region so again if there is a region that they want to default it to they can so anytime they go they don't have to keep entering in that region so, the, but this, in my mind, this would not need to be um, decrypt, encrypted, right? So, let's go ahead and try that, guys. Let's try that. I actually have some source code that I think I could use. So, it should speed up the process. But before we do that, I need to install the package. So, let's get this package installed. So what we're going to end up using, cool, we got that installed. So let me go ahead and find my, the code for this, right? So I have a file that's called encryption. So there's a lot of things that we have to get cleaned up here for sure. All right, let me go ahead and take some of this code.
clean it up and um yeah man we could start off with this for now um let me try to think so for sure i do not want to add this to the app but it is something that we're going to have to call so what i i'm just going to add it in here for now so we're going to call this um I just call it in uh, encrypt config dot py. So let's copy this in here. So this we do specify where we want to save it to. So I think in this case, we literally will be locally. So we just be, we're going to just call it the, the name of the file. So that should save it locally on wherever the app is at. We're going to write. Um, there's a lot of stuff we're writing, but again, we don't need to write all of that. If there exists an old key file, this will, re will remove it. So let's kind of go look at that process. There's a process here where we are specifying initiating key dot key. Oops. Let's see. If there, if there exists an, uh, an older key file, use this. So this is looking for the old key file because they're going to remove it. If we end up creating a new one, if it exists, remove it. All right. So that's what that's doing. The next thing is going to do is depending on the system, if it's Linux, etc., but it's going to create a new key file. Hmm. So Linux, Win32, so this one is taking the key file, decoding it. exception remove key file a permission error occur please rerun the script exit so let me make sure that i understand this logic that i have initially so again i haven't been a while since i worked on this this is what we're writing out to the file And in this case, it's configuration file, new line, and then it's this. So for example, let's say in my case, we call this um, access key, a new line, and then this would be called secret access key. And then the last one we will call default region. So 
So like all of this is coming from on top. So we have all of these. Everything is blank by default, right? So it's blank by default. Uh, we have a property set to MQTT username. So this is a function that ultimately returns back this property. But we have a setter as well for the same. So for username, for example, let's see. Yeah, we have a setter as well. So the setter is based off a uh, username. So this, again, I was using something different for that. Password setter, we are encrypting the password. So we are generating a key. We get the key. And based on that key, we are encrypting the password. We're encoding it and then pass it to the encryption process. And then we're decoding that encryption. So this key, where else are else are we using it? I'm trying to think where else are we encoding? And I don't think we there it goes, we are over here. But here's the thing. We're only encoding it once because we're using the same key over and over again. That's what it is. So we need to generate a key. But because we generate a key, we're going to need that key later on for the purpose of decoding. So what I'm trying to think now is maybe we... we let me see. Let me look at some. Let's look at some documentation real quick. Let's see what we could find. So we have the generate key, which is kind of what we saw over here, right? Under the password section, generate key. Yep. Uh, guarantee that a message encrypted using it cannot be manipulated or read without the key. Uh, the implementation, blah, blah, blah. Also known as secret key. Supports. Generate key. Generate a fresh. Keep this someplace safe. If you lose it, you will no longer be able to... Uh, decrypt messages. If anyone else gains access to it, they will be able to decrypt all of your messages. They would also be able to blah, blah, blah. Yep. I get that. So let me see where I want to see more about the generate key. Source. Oh, that's all it's doing then. It's a base 64. Okay, so that's all it's doing. So like, for example, where is this? There the, here it goes, I got this key. So let's go to, what is the website called? Um.
Is it this one? Yeah, I think it is this one. So decode base 64 format. Let's see, let's see. We could decode this. Uh, that's not right. So then I'm going to do this, man. I want to do some testing real quick. So let me go, go here. This is for, this will be base 64, which I do have on here. So again, test, we already tested this out and this actually works as planned. Let me go to the beginning. Uh, oops import base 64 and this would be um uh, key and let me do a print to kind of see this oh i need to import in my os yep there we go so now let me save it let's go ahead and test this out python test so again this is Um, so it's bytes, you got the little B value, right? It's binary. So what's well, been, uh, encoded, um, let's go back. Where was I at to the decoding piece? So what I really, what I should have done is this. I want to see what this value is. So value, whatever this value is. All right. So now let's run this again. Ooh, I forgot to print the value. Damn it. Let's try this out again. So let me see something real quick. Return the string aside the random bytes suitable for in cryptograph. Okay, gotcha. So it's returning bytes, random size bytes. In my case, I specified a set 32, which is what it gave me back. And that's what this is. So that makes sense. And this is what's ultimately being encoded bytes using the URL and file system safe base 64. Yep. That makes sense. Is a byte like object to encode the results is returning as a byte objects. The alpha instead of plus and underscore instead of, yep. So base 64 and it's being encoded. Let's go back to, uh, we want to decode the base 64 format.
Let me make sure this is not ASCII two. No, it's not. Let's do auto detection. Either way, based on the value that I could tell, it's this is pretty much what it is. And it is bytes as well, so that's where I think this would be different. Uh, let me find the tool that I have used before. URL, there it goes. Let's look at URL decoding. See how it gave, it gave us, uh, what did it give us back? And that same value. Yeah, that's not right. I'm looking at something wrong. Let me see if I can find this other website real quick. Um, is it this one? No. So let's just go to encode and for now, but again, I need to encode. Base 64 dot B 64 encode. Yep. Which that makes sense. Base 64 encoded string. This is specific value. So what this is doing, I get what this is doing. This is generate this ultimately what this is doing is generating. I'm trying to think it's generating a key based on by values of 32 and then it's ultimately encoding that on based on base 64 which again gives me back this value right so if I run it again I'll get a different slightly different value so let's So I'm going to take this value for now and and I'm actually going to add it in here in the initiation. I'm going to call it self underscore key B. Yep. So let's see, I think I already had a underscore. Yeah, I do have underscore key over here. So how am I using that? I'm not using it there. I am using it here, but now I'm like, you know what? I don't think I need it there because I could use it in here. And this would be in order to encrypt some, you know, the value. And just like the way I end up encrypting the password and so forth. Um, now, let me kind of come down. We're going to create this file. We're going to create this config, this file. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a just kind of walk through the process. I want to see the password piece real quick. The so let's uh, let me delete this. All right, like this password piece. What I'm gonna do here? I'm gonna change this, and I'm gonna call this 
access key. Access key. So we have a property for username, and then we would have a settler, which in this case would be for access key. And the argument, of course, is going to be key. And that's where this will come in. It will be key. And I need a, so I need a kind of, let me go back on top. I will have let's call this access key equals blank. And there's so now I will take this guy access key all right let me see what else the other one i'm going to call this default region it will be region and let me go hold up there it goes and then let me go come up here on top Again, a lot of this I don't need, man. So I'm going to comment all of this out. So I have my key, access key, default region. So a lot of these are going to error out. So let me comment a lot of these out. For now. And yep, this one too. All right. So the only one that I have is region and access key. And ultimately for now, that's kind of what I want to just test out. So for access, secret access key, I'm going to just call it testing. And let's see. Access key. Uh, default region. Okay, so this will write that to the file. Let me see if there exists an old key file, this will remove it. So I'm not creating the key file. So since I'm not creating it, I don't need this. And uh, what else? Open the key dot key file and place the key in it. So again, I'm not creating any key files. So because of that, I, I don't need this. Damn it. And trying to do that. So let's comment all of that out. And then ultimately a lot of these we don't need either. So why why do I have these blank? I'm trying to think now. It's part of the create config. 
Um, I think it's blank because if you create multiple files or another file. So I need to see, I just don't remember, but for now. And then the rest, of course, could go. So let's see for this. Um, Let me see. I'm just looking at some of my old source code code real quick. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, I'm setting it in there. Got it. That makes sense. That makes total sense. So what I'm going to have to do here is under my... Let me see. Under my app, we will do from encrypt configuration, import configuration, right? So as we import configuration, now I'm gonna look at my post. This is where I'm gonna be bringing in my, um, what am I bringing in? Default region. And this would be request.form.get uh, default region. Right. The other, the next value. Well, let me put it this way: if there, if there is no value there, then this would just be a blank. Uh, the other one would be access key request form get access key. Again, leave it blank if nothing's provided. And then the other one is secret access key. And again, this is secret access key. All right. So for my configuration here, I'm going to call this. Um, Let's call this config. And then now I want to be able to specify config access key equals access key. Config default region equals default region. All right, so I'll be able to specify my values. Uh, once I do that, then I'll be able to call the 
which is the config create configuration, which means should generate the file. Now, that being said, if I look at my settings, I do have forms in here, so I should be able to pass those in. It should be able to save. Okay, but after it does this, I do need to return something back. And I think what I would do here would be a redirect. For now, it would be um the setting come back to the same page so let's see how that works let's go to settings so for region i'm going to call this us West two, that's my default region for secret. It doesn't matter cause I'm not saving nothing, but for access key, um, I do actually have it in my so source code. So let's go ahead and get access key. And let's see what we get when we hit submit. Ooh, we got a very the value function for setting. They're not returning the response. Okay, so this actually aired out toward the end. Let's see if it generated a file. Boom, we got a config file. So that's good. We got a config.ini file. So if I open this up, what do we have? So this generated, oh, it did save my secret key. So that's interesting. Did it, well, hold on. Did I pick the wrong thing? Dude, I bet you I did. Access key, secret key. Dude, I didn't even set secret key in here. Hold up. I think it's my HTML. What, what do I have here? Secret, okay, access key. And then over here it's called secret access key. Default region, okay, all of that seems legit. Let me go back. Access key, request form dot access key, makes sense. Secret access key, secret access key. My config access key. All right, let me look at my encryption step. Maybe I missed something here. Oh, my bad. Duh, I hard coded that testing. I was like, well, what happened here? But that makes sense. So nothing got passed in or did it? Let, let's let's check. Um, I'm a little bit I'm not sure what happened here. So access key got encrypted. Look at the encryption right here. It did get encrypted. It's just not in a new line. So let's see what happened. Why is this not in a new line? Um, oops, I removed the N. Duh. Okay, so this would be a new line. Cool, cool. And then I forgot to put a new line back here. So this would be a new line as well. But what about default region? Did that not get saved? See, there's no default region here. So let's see what happened here. So we have default region, which is blank. Let's take a look at that. De oh, damn it. I forgot to change this. No wonder. Default region. And default region. That makes more sense. Uh, same thing here. Dude, this is not valid. What the hell is going on here? Access key to return back. Yep. Okay, cool. Now that should be better. 
So let me save this. Uh, let's rerun it. So again, if I copy in my, what, where is it at? My test. So this will be my access key. Again, secret, I don't have nothing. Region would be US West 2. So now we're gonna submit. It didn't return nothing back, so I understand why, which is not a big issue, but we'll deal with that later. So for now, let's see, let's look at our file. There it goes, perfect. So see how now it actually looks better. My default region is US West 2. Um, this, I just need to put something, but ultimately look at my access key. My access key got encrypted now the actual key itself to unlock it is inside the script right because i have a key in here now the idea would be this application would get compiled and then ultimately um yeah it would be not as easily identifiable Th there's other better ways to do it follow me with the encryption key like um like a lot of web projects, you have secret key that you deal with. Sometimes you add it to the project, but ideally you add it as a, a variable that comes in, right? Saved on local machine, things of that nature. In this case, it can be compiled application, not so much. There's things that you can make a little more challenging where it comes in from another file and it imports to another file, things of that nature. So, but once you compile it, you don't, you can't really see the source code, right? But there is ways to kind of backtrack it. It's very challenging, but there is ways, right? Ideally, because this is more ran locally, at least that's, that's the way I'm looking at it. It's a tool that I will use. Um, it's a tool that, you know, um, the way I'm going to use it, it shouldn't be an issue, put it that way. So now let me make, let me add I'm going to add a secret access key. So that's going to be blank. And let's go ahead and add that on here. Right? So I don't need this. Um, what so what we're going to do here, we're going to call property and we're going to call this um, secret access key. Which is going to return secret access key. All right, and the next thing we're gonna, we're gonna call the settler. So in this case, it would be called secret access key dot settler. And then it would be secret access key self. And in this case, it would be the key. So we need to pass in the key first, right? The key that we specified up on top. And then we're going to call the secret access key because we're going to end up assigning whatever ends up getting encrypted, right? So encrypt key dot encode. Decode. So now what I could do down here would be under test. Let's get that deleted. 
and then let me add it in here. Okay, so that solved that issue. And then down back down here, let's do So let's clean this up because there's a lot of stuff in here that I actually do not need. So I don't need this. There's a lot of this that I don't need. Don't need this. And then of course I do not need all of this. Okay, so now if I try it one more time, oops, I need to start it up first. Oh yeah, so what I need to do too, because they're going to keep doing that. So at the end, when instead of doing redirect, let's do render template. Dot HTML. So let me try it again. I think it was on me. I forgot to do it properly. So let's do redirect. In this case, it will be URL for. Um, this would be settings. So, but I'm gonna have to bring in the URL. URL for there it goes. So now let's try it out. Let's see what we get here. So now let's copy one, hopefully last time. But let's copy this information in here. Access key. Oops. Secret key. Then of course it would be US West 2. Uh, and I hit submit. So why is it still airing it out? That doesn't make sense to me. This is get, this is post, it does all of this, and then it should redirect. But it's almost like, I guess it doesn't want to redirect back to itself. Is that what it is? So let me just redirect to this page then. Let me just type in anything for now. Duh, duh, I know why. I forgot to put return. Dude, that's, I'm stupid. 
That's what it was. All right, got it, got it, got it, got it. So let's go back and let me go ahead and copy. All right, one more time and I think we got it, guys. So we got access key. Uh, secret key and then it's going to be US West 2 submit all right when you get a proper message but that's something we could always add later on but nevertheless um, I think it's saved let's take a look at it oh no secret what happened Oh, duh, I know why. I know exactly why. I forgot to to set it over here. Config dot secret key equals secret key. That's why. Duh, duh, duh. That was my mistake. All right, guys. This time should be the last time. So let me copy this. West two. Submit. All right. Yep. It's took us back to our page. Um, so I think what, what I would ultimately do here would be probably renders the same page, but fill in the information. Um, So if there are any changes that, that need to be done, but I can't fill in the information with, let me try to think. Um, hmm. Yeah. So I think the way I would do it would be And they save it, maybe just send them to another page, right? Like a dashboard homepage or something. Then they could always come back. But if they click on it, it will populate default some information in here for them. Now, my thing about it is I don't know if I want to decode it yet, but I think I need to because if the value changes, I do want to save those changes. Okay. I need to think about it, but either way, if I'm, if I look, we, I'm going to assume we do have, there it goes. Everything has been, has been, uh, encrypted. Our access key is encrypted. Our secret key is encrypted. The only one that it's not is our default region, which is fine. Because now that it's here, that that's where I would have a process of reading this file. And we would get the, uh, get the key. So that worked good. I think that that will work based on what, what I just did right now. Will work for sure. So let's see. Uh, all right, man. All right, Cap. 
See you later, man. I'm about to call it a night as well. Uh, damn, I've been streaming for like four and a half hours, man. It's been a long time. So, all right, man. I think I found, I'm in a good spot, though. I'm going to stop here. Probably continue on some more when I stream. Um, but, man, I think we made some made some real good progress. We, we're encrypting uh, information that's sensitive. It's, it's saving it to the file. Ultimately, probably what I do next is going to be the default region where be able to pull that information from here so again on my app when i go to ec2 it will default to the right region right if i have it set to this which i do it would default to that region by default that's what it would end up showing in the drop down or any other drop down that i create so it makes it a lot easier and then you just change it as you need but in this case, this is my default region. Boom, it shows my information. Awesome. So this is pretty cool, man. Made some good progress, I think. Um, yeah. All right, man. Damn, it's already 2 o'clock my time. So it's already late too, man. I'm going to call it a night. Again, man, I appreciate it. Thanks for joining. Again, I maybe this is beneficial to some of y'all. At least give you some exposure to programming especially if you're new and you're trying to get into it so follow me on youtube if you like um i do a lot of videos a lot of there's a lot of um uh, a lot of good videos that, that i think will help you out and i and i do have a python beginner course that i'm starting to roll out content context to so you can watch that and man that may help you out again guys man appreciate it and uh, y'all take care. Peace.